Hail and well met. Welcome to episode two of season two of the Westgate Regulars campaign. I am Eric Scott to be, and these are the Dungeon Scrawlers. Uh, we are a group of writers that meets every Wednesday to play this game in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, and um, I'll have us all go through and introduce ourselves like I always do. But I wanted to say something different so you wouldn't think it was just a repeat episode. Take it away, <laughs> Hi, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me. Hi, I'm Erin M. Evans. I am the author of the Brimstone Angels Saga, a six-book series set in the Forgotten Realms, uh, featuring twin tieflings fighting against the Nine Hells. Um, I'm also the host of Champions of Lore for Codename Entertainment. Um, and I play in Idle Champions Presents, which is no longer the Unfair Seas. It is a fool's errand. Um, so speaking of that, I'll tell you about our sponsor. Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms is a Woo-hoo! strategy game that unites iconic Dungeons and Dragons characters from novels, campaigns, and popular shows into one epic adventure. Um, and that includes my characters, Farida and Havilar. The game is available for PC and Mac on Steam and Web, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, iPad, iPhone, and on all Android devices. Uh, If you type the uh, code at the bottom of the screen into chat, it will give you an Electrum chest code of your very own. Uh So you can get some cool shiny stuff, hopefully. Um, Definitely get some gems. Um, Also, remember in game to check out the voting for Idol Champions Presents. Uh, You can affect the game. Please be kind. (laughs) <laughs> more infinite no, tentacles no, no, yeah, no, no infinite, infinite tentacles, tentacles. <laughs> also, also every one of you that voted for the curse of rhyme <laughs> it's your no, time for the curse of rhyme <laughs> oh, I don't no. think anybody realizes how bad I am at rhyming on why I am the worst oh I thought it was hilarious and charming <laughs> but you want to burst <laughs> wow so I'm um, Rhiannon Held. I write urban fantasy is Rhiannon Held and space opera is RZ Held. And this is when I usually say, we're all writers, check out our books. But there's something new and exciting to tell you to check out. Um, right now we are doing a community challenge. What you may not know about me is as well as being a writer, I am a professional archaeologist. So at some point, if the community challenge is met, um, I will be running a one shot where the characters get to do archaeology and not just archaeology, but real archaeology. None of that fedora (laughs) nonsense. Um, It will not be boring. I promise you that. Um, We'll be taking our webcams out into the yard, digging in the dirt. (laughs) It'll be really exciting. If you're interested in seeing our characters explore Mithranor and find exciting things there, put some points towards the community challenge. Highly recommended. Uh, hi, I'm Yingying Wang. I am a writer and a filmmaker. I am Stephen Merlino, also a writer and a teacher. I am Randy Henderson. I, uh, I run a Tarrasque shelter. I know you can get your Tarrasques from like mad wizards or, you know, breeders, but I really highly recommend getting them from shelters. They need love too. Thank yeah, you. you really don't want to go to a Tarrasque mill. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No. Here. Cool. Not cool. Not cool at all. <laughs> Tarasks have feelings too, folks. All right. Well, and that is our group. And uh, we are picking up in Westgate once again. Uh, the Greengrass Festival has come and gone. Gifts were exchanged. A heroic feast was shared. A good time was had by all. And yet, Darkness and evil lurks in the shadows and beneath the surface (laughs) of this world because it is the Forgotten Realms and that's how it works. So Sturge Sturge has been following a particular lead for some time, watching a building called the Broken Buckle. And um, that evening after sharing the heroic repast, he ducked out to go and check on his uh, building that he's been watching and saw folk, um, a a flurry of activity around the building. Um, Kind of surreptitiously, folk were um, moving things in and out from behind the building. And he gets the sense that maybe uh, whoever is using the building, Night Masks, are looking to move on from this safe house. So if you're gonna hit this safe house, it's gotta be soon. 
And so he hurries back to Briar House with that knowledge. It's about mid-afternoon at this point. Um, I also want to remind you that Artemisia received an invitation to go to a uh, a moot with uh, well, it didn't have a an name. Old friend, an old friend, <laughs> and the letter was sealed with a sign of House Bleth. So, so it's not the fun kind of old friend. Yeah, that was a fire knife. But it's someone from the fire knife. Same yes. difference, yes. right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like if it's not Brigante Bleth. Someone has some unholy pluck to be sealing their messages with her <laughs> uh, stamp. <laughs> Maybe anyway. we want to meet them. And so that is how our episode opens. Um, this is beginning the arc of Raid Upon Darkness. That's what I'm calling it for now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, Serge, uh, you head back to Briar House, where Artemisia is talking with everyone about something pertaining to the business of the house. What is that that you're talking to them about, Artemisia? Um, so she's going to have her, her notebook. Um, you, you guys can't see it, but she's referring to it. Um, and I don't know if I need to roll deception or something, but basically she's going to be just throwing out every piece of sort of financial jargon that she can think of. Huh. Um, and some of them she understands she's misusing and some of them she doesn't quite understand herself. Mm. Um, but she's talking about, you know, we, we have people who are living in the house and people who are eating at the house, and but then Sarshan can hunt for himself and Ruan like doesn't really have a good source of coin so we need to look at our finances and and blah 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 and depreciation and like oh my god the fiduciary amortization <laughs> of the bottom line is clearly <laughs> underwriting the <laughs> to put all, all you guys to sleep. Well, Definitely well, got sure. Her mask down so you can't tell if she's sleeping. She's wooden, a painted wooden. Sarshan has also got his mask down, but it's clear oh, that like his head is leaning <laughs> against his <laughs> <Lea's> shoulder. <laughs> Ro Rogar gives Artemisia like a little encouraging nudge. Said, "It's okay. They do that when I give my sermons too. It's it's fine. You're doing great." It's it's kind of what I want. Okay, um, <laughs> so to to wrap this all up, um, I think that uh, what we need to look into is a uh, investor, if you will, um, to give us some capital, um, and then we can put it towards uh, rebuilding the property around our house and um, helping out the fire snails. And um, so, if you guys are okay with that, I will go ahead with it. What would we be the capital of, like? Is whiskey <laughs> is whiskey in Om? No, where are we? It's a free city. It's a free city. Oh, it's free. Then why do we need money? I do not understand. I'm sorry. I'm just not understanding what you're it asking. It is a city ruled by the benevolent hand of the free market. <laughs> benevolent, no, it's huh? an invisible hand, isn't benevolent it? Benevolent free market. <laughs> right, right, right. I think Ooh, Stom would like to ask, um, did you have an investor in mind? Uh, yes, but I can take care of that. Don't, don't worry. This is when Cecilia pulls her mask <laughs> up and goes, hold up. I don't think we should be agreeing to have someone telling us what to do with money or anything else without knowing who they are. Mm. Especially yeah. because sometimes you make choices about people we should trust. What would they be investing in and how would they be getting out of it? Well, I think they have a vested interest in us being heroic and the... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me we are not talking about Lilton. And so she's going to open her notebook. <laughs> to you guys. Oh, okay. And and like the it's the basically it's the accounts and clearly something has gone really wrong here. There's like scratches out and like negative numbers and like it's just completely gotten away with her with like but th there's no choice what other there's, choice do we have okay no there are so many choices before, A lot of choices. yeah let's go back to lilton any of us any of us for any reason <laughs> and she's gonna make eye contact like i am not letting you go back to that man you know he's no good for you which you and may do anyway if er, er, you you'll do that without our sanction and 
Honestly, I don't want to be living in this house if Lilton is going to own it. Sarshan goes, huh? Sturge, where did you come from? <laughs> uh, I'm doing some rounds today, and I have something very important to tell you. Um, although, of course, this is also important. I'd rather not be uh, uh, rush this. Okay, do you take the, the ledger from Artemisia, which Cecilia does not follow at all. She's <laughs> definitely not the kind of person that balances her checkbook. Um, I don't even know if people do that anymore. So, uh, just gonna be like, I feel like, okay, I feel like we need somebody to, to look at this because I can't imagine this is what is happening here. I don't, I don't actually I, understand. Just I gonna kind of look around like, does somebody else <laughs> follow? Um, I, I know somebody who's good, who's good with money. Who's good with money? Ryan mm -hmm. says it's something to do with this nebulous concept that civilized folk have created called money. What? <laughs> Ruan, <laughs> pin in that. Stong, do you know somebody who's good at money? Because this is obviously stressing Artemisia out a lot. Yeah, I mean, that person was you. Oh, crap. <laughs> but I have another person I recently met who's also That's good with money. right. I'm excellent with your money. Uh, yeah. Didn't that, didn't that we last... Didn't that wee lass, uh, Lithaka, like, she seemed to turn a pretty good profit with the coin you gave her, didn't she? Lithaka's like 11. Who was oh. the... Good point. Well, who was uh... the one who took uh, your investments, uh, Yang Yang? I mean, uh, Stong. <laughs> Yang Yang. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? Uh, oh, yeah. Time. Uh, Badger. Badger. Badger Zooks. Yes, very trustworthy. A <laughs> hundred times more trustworthy than Lilton. <clears throat> but he seemed pretty good with money. Yeah, we need we need the seed money. There's we're there's not enough money. And Badger, it's it's you invest with him. Do we need but, money? What well, like what are we lacking money for? Well, we're digs in his pouch for like whatever's left from the gold shrine. Pulls it out. There's quite a bit of lint and maybe like three <laughs> three gold coins. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Oh. Exactly, sister. Ruan says what does one really need money for? Whoa. Money is just a corruptive influence, and that is the downfall of all civilized places. <laughs> See, that's why if we were to just erode this rent. capitalist system, and he just goes on. But we have the lot. <laughs> we just like shove his face away. Like, <laughs> we have the lot. We could sell the, the lot Briar House was on. No, we can't. That was owned by a shower woman. No, we bought it from we, her. We bought it from money. Uh, we don't we actually own the Vamos lot. This we is own the one where we committed real estate fraud. <laughs> but you know what? Was. I think ownership uh, trumps all in this town. Is what I've learned. So, give me also a where the Vamos is. Uh, a number Ruin would be good. Disgusted. He's like, ah, sister. Oh, that meal well, was so wonderful, but I feel like I need to vomit. <laughs> and everyone's like, we're not even paying attention to you, Ruin. <laughs> Artemisia. Yes. What is the number? Uh, she she's gonna like consult her ledger and pull some number out of the the air. It's a know, high number. It. It's a high number. All right, I have a suggestion. Yes. We take it from the night masks, Ooh, and it starts I'm it. tonight. I, <clears throat> it Sturge turns to a um, to a covered board that no one had really noticed until now, because, <laughs> <laughs> and he he wheels it out and out from the shadows. <laughs> 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 well, okay, all right. So so not Lilton, and and we'll get money streams from somewhere else but i i can't i can't balance this so can we at least uh first uh, hire a secretary and then i won't have to come and be mean and ask you guys for rent all the time because mm -hmm. i feel bad well, you know wasn't sebastian asking acting as your secretary when you went to the uh to the leadership meeting sort of yes but sarshan glares at oh, her oh that. sorry Oh, yeah. No, I totally understand. Sorry. <laughs> well, I can ask Badger if he wants to be our secretary. He technically already works for me. Well, so I that doesn't seem in Badger's wheelhouse, but maybe he has somebody that does his books? Uh, Eric, do I know that information? You do not know that information. 
I was being a bit facetious when I said Badger, since he's rather a scoundrel and um, the yeah, only that's what I thought. he ever paid you anything was because you almost broke Wrongstong, almost broke his thumbs off. Did I, I tell you that story? Oh, my bad. <laughs> In a lot of detail, it seemed like it really affected you, actually. There was a great deal of wine at the feast, Sarshan says. That too. Oh. But for new viewers, we, for new viewers, welcome to Adventure Accounting. In case you didn't know that, right. this, this yeah, show here's was. the thing: we know, quickly, we know no, lots I'm... of people who run businesses. I'm sure we can ask them Ilera. who does their accounting. Yes, Il Ilera, Ilera will know go. somebody. Ilera, I am sure, knows people who are very good at accounting for things creatively. Ooh. Though I do want to point out, Ilera was the one who recommended Badger in the first place. Hmm. He's always yeah. made me money. But so that is true. Well, technically, okay. like investment. Okay. I've only ever made money one way. Maybe we'll find one tied up in the night masks. The safe house. <laughs> <laughs> save, save them. I like they're, it. They're, they're, br they're branching out into into fraud. Them. I like it. <laughs> All right. And then we well, could branch out into fraud. She'll make a little <laughs> note that says hire secretary. Tell secretary to get the rent from people. Sarshan raises his hand. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about this assault upon the night masks to take their stuff. Right. Your financial worries are all behind you, Artemisia. Mm -hmm. Surge with a flourish, whips off the sheet that was hiding the, um, <laughs> the, the map board with all the, here you can see that in behind me there, you can see all the, the what do you call them? Strings and yarn attached. You know, it's a map. It's a map of Westgate. Yes. But also, mm. you can see like different pictures of people and of locations with strings strung between them and notes. Yeah. Yeah. I need one of those for my matchmaking business. So Sturge is going to, um, if everyone's present, he's got their attention. He's going to so she's like, "Aha! Ooh, the, what uh, are we looking at?" Insanity behind you. What you're right. looking at, Sorshan, I believe you were with us at the time, but if not, I'll, I'll rehearse a bit for you. We've had two very significant victories over the night masks. Most recently, and the lesser of the two, was our victory against the Twilight Knight. He was oh, arrogant, he was vain, he was easily manipulated and trapped into an an arena fight in which we, in front of a sold out crowd at the arena, destroyed him. Dirge passed plastered the city with posters taunting him into fighting us. Indeed, that was. Of uh, 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 course, he did kill or maim a good number of our friends on the way, but I sure. I just wanted to give you props for manipulating him. It was aye, aye, great. good job. Good job, Sturge. Okay. Sturge, Sturge. Rogar doesn't say that out loud, of course. <laughs> <laughs> he did murder a lot of people just He's exactly oh. to mess with us, so. He aye. did start it, indeed. No pity. Um, but our more significant victory was that against the dark, the dark, the Duchess of Darkness. And oh. she, as you recall, we weren't even going there to fight her. In fact, she was way out of our league. But we were going there to rescue you, Artemisia, and your evil stepmother, Cruella. <laughs> Marcelea. Marcelea. Just <laughs> <laughs> laughing her head off. Um, <laughs> And it was by accident we fell into combat with her. And in fact, all of us fled the field into a rope trick that your your stepmother made, except for Stong, who stubbornly, like the great ape he had become in that moment, pummeled the living shite out of her. That's your word, Rogar. I know, I said I used it so you'd understand what I was saying. The right. dead shite, yes, Sergeant says. I'm trying to remember if I heard the story correctly. It's a dwarven word there. that translates as poo poo. You were not there, were you? <laughs> uh -huh. so, he was not. It was a moment of glory, and when we realized Stong. I recall was... something about a load bearing statue. Anyway, continue, friends. That's Friendster. on the night masks! That's not on us! No. Oh, we, fault. Stong. Yes. With, with our help, then finished her against a load bearing and living statue of Shar. Destroying the shaft. Exactly. Oh. Well, it was. It wasn't just a. Magical. 
Yes, it wasn't. <laughs> it was definitely consecrated or or desecrated. It was also in the middle of the sickening radiance. I just want to point that out. Shar is the worst. It was our best moment. I I cannot uh, I cannot find a better. Sarshan pipes uh, up. Didn't you liquefy a bunch of people? He asked Cecilia. That did happen. Yes. Mm. Huh, good Welcome times. Raiders. I mean, <laughs> wow, that sounds truly heroic. Raiders roll in. Didn't you liquefy <laughs> a bunch of people? <laughs> did accounting fraud? Oh, terrible. And I, and I did stick Shara's head on go. that. I did stick Shara's head on that pig statue. That was what I oh, was up. That was brilliant. That was All the right. that was the next best thing. So, so you have declared war against the night masks. Indeed. So. Here I come to my point. We, I can think of some other reasons we also hate them. Just, just gonna if we need more reasons. Okay, thank you. Uh, we may need those. <laughs> but we, in that great moment, captured an entire bag full of ledgers, maps, accounts, relationships, notes, and it has been my work for the last year to assemble those into this great master plan map on the wall here with all of them keeping my my eyes and ears in the city watching different places of course we were swept away into the astral sea and all then westgate itself was pummeled by mastodons and dragons and long story short i haven't had a whole lot of time to do anything about it but today they are making a move I've been watching the Black Buckle. It's been closed for a while. It's an inn, or was. And I don't believe that the Night Masks have been using it, except as an exit from their underground tunnels. I may be wrong. In any case, I did dip in there mentally, using my divination powers, and there were two rather powerful spellcasters there least they were able to sense the unsensible and almost took a swing at me through my own spell. In any case, such heavy hitters wouldn't be present if something heavy weren't going down. And it seems to me it is time for us to make our presence known. I would also add, with the fire snails now in such a vulnerable state, we must ensure that the night masks who also have been rather dormant over this past year, don't make a move to somehow corrupt this new clan in the town, mm. in the city. So if we start striking now, I think we have a chance of perhaps paying off some debts and also capturing more information, destroying their plans, outing them, etc., declaring ourselves once again against the night masks. Huzzah, Sarshan says. <laughs> so, looks around, question. no one else has done it. He's like, ah. Uh, I'm very puzzle. in for this plan, but mm -hmm. question. You yes. said there are two powerful spellcasters in there. Did you get any more of a vibe about what kind of spellcaster or who it might be? Good question. Mm. And Cecilia is very much thinking of her father who arrived and made some sort of alliance with the night masks um, that she might have killed him, but she's not really, she doesn't think she did because it happened in a weird dream world and she's waiting for him to pop back up because that's the kind of thing he does. That's a very good point. Um, I have no idea your father is very worthy to be killed. They're like, yeah. I think he's dead. He got stabbed by that seriously like poisoned blade. And then you dreamed you chopped his head off. He's probably gone. That would be a reasonable <laughs> yeah, thing. But Cecilia is like, no, super suspicious. Yeah. You can't really know until you see their head on a stick. Um, I just want to know. I just want to know if we're going in, cleaning house, or I, this is like a personal thing. So in short, I was only able to take a, glim a, a glimpse of the place. Um, and I saw the, the casters even more briefly. And the last thing I saw was them apparently noticing me and then casting a spell I didn't wait around to find out what the spell was. I believe I would have recognized your father. Okay. That doesn't mean that those guys don't know him though. And then I would like to also know what they know uh, or just keep him from using them as, as help in the future would be good. You know so that, I'm in. Yes, excellent. Uh, this evening is the time we strike at midnight. That's very dramatic. 
Why not? We are a part of these like they're vampires. <laughs> well, Shouldn't we well, be going in at high noon? Yeah. But... Is this the morning? <laughs> is this the morning? So we have this the, the afternoon, is this the isn't it? Morning it's of the next day? Late afternoon. After afternoon. the feast. I mean, yeah, it could be the next day if you would prefer it to be the next day. Oh, no, I was just asking. We, we ended with that Heroes Feast, so, you know, if we could still have the effects of it, that would be awesome. That's what I was wondering, like, yeah. the meta, timing, meta timing mechanics of it. kind of way. So if it's the same day, so, uh, yeah, if we had that as, like, a Heroes Brunch, <laughs> and then... <laughs> and then... <laughs> well, and, I, and, and then this so I'm afternoon. always up for a Heroes Brunch. Oh, uh, they're the I best. Heroes Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Heroes Brunch um, is great. I believe I got a message from um, House Bleth, uh, certainly sealed with a um, Fire Knives seal, um, mm. which also seems like something we need to do something about. I don't, I don't want to stand her up, but I also don't want to leave you guys in the lurch. So is there any way we can, somebody can come with me to the meeting and then we can uh, join up oh. to attack the Night Mass? I will definitely not, come with you. That chick locked us up, and I'm still mad about it. I'm not sure she wants to see me right now, so I think I'm going to stay behind and spend some time with Mirabelle. Does, it, does anybody else want to, to come to the meeting? Uh, do you feel... Do you feel... Sorry, Shin raised his hand. <laughs> Is there a threat? Don't Ooh, set anything me. on fire, Sarshan. What? Well, I only I mean, did that last time. Why would I do it again? <laughs> I, she did I see send your point. A message rather than like coming in force. So uh, that there. is good. And it's also in a public place, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. So she has already I don't... made the first mistake. She should have come to see us on her own terms because then when I inevitably set fire to the building, I would burn down our house. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't burn this house down. That is a really no. important thing. I need you to remember. That would be really bad. Um, I'm sorry. Yes, the... I did remember. Thank you. Do I have everyone? I just need to know. I need to do some planning. Do I have everyone? <laughs> for tonight. Yes. yes. Do you need us to get anything before while we're out? Rest. Don't use <laughs> all your spell slots is what you're saying. I mean, I'll be <laughs> fine. I'll just take a, take a quick disco nap. It'll be great. Mm. I don't know what that's oh, called in oh. I almost oh, forgot. <laughs> I almost forgot. I have gifts. Again? Oh, more, more gifts. gifts. Yes. Looks like the chat has done inspiration for Artemisia. So Artemisia, oh, gifts for the chat. Nice. Um, as you know, magic is the thing for which I live and from which I get the most joy in life. And what allows you to fall asleep at night, Sarshan says. I typically bury myself in magical items before sleep every day. However, I recognize that some of these items, since I cannot possibly use them all at one time, would be better suited in the hands of my friends. Hmm, that's very generous and uncharacteristic. Is there a doppelganger test I can do really quick? Yeah. Could. yeah. What do you feel guilty for? Friend Rogar, Sergeant says, your magic can still bring people back from the dead, right? <laughs> um, okay. I, but it's a bit expensive and difficult. Oh. And as we're having money we problems right money. now, probably. Right. Yeah, we'll yeah, call yeah. that Plan C. <laughs> um, also, the whole death part's still painful. So. Um, I guess Stone yes. could cast True Seeing, and that would actually reveal the true nature of any uh, poly polymorph. So. No? Would it? Uh, yeah, he sees the original shape of any shapeshifter. Is that what the spell says? Yep. Okay. It's true sight. It grants him true sight, and true sight does that. Does, okay. And, and he does, looks around. He wait. Not... Oh my god, what, what does Stog see? <laughs> I did not like Eric's reaction there. <laughs> um, well, first of all, all the irregulars are indeed who they appear oh to be. Oh my god, what is happening? Okay. <laughs> oh my god, can he, does he have x-ray vision too? Is he like looking at everyone naked right now? Is that... What? That's, well, that's not what that's no, wrong. he does not have x-ray vision. <laughs> oh. You all, you, you've, so you've seen Sturge naked a couple times. It's not yeah. a big deal. Um, uh, Ruan and Sarshan both appear to be themselves. Okay, They're good. elven selves. Oh my god, um, wait. It just Sergeant, doing it. I'm gonna I'm gonna send one additional thing to uh, Yang Yang. He may or may not want to tell it to everybody. Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Well, 
Unexpected. Right. Okay. Holy cow. In the, in well, the um, we all gasp. But in the in the meantime, Stong is going to say, um, "Well, Sturge is Sturge." Thank you. You see, Sorry, it's impossible you. for one to change and grow. Cecilia, for you. Mm-hmm. He draws the wand from his shirt. Oh. Gives it to her. What is it? This is a wand of paralysis. I suggest oh. you get to know it. I have yet to use it. It's unlikely I ever will because I abhor spells that require concentration. And I think you are uniquely suited to it since your spell power, though mighty, is limited in its breadth. Hmm. This would extend it. I take the compliment part of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stomp. Yes. You are mighty. You are noisy. I have for you these elven booties. I've had these (laughs) since the very first day we met. I would like you to use them. These will help you to move as silently as the merest breath of wind. Oh, that's really good because this uh, this red dragon armor is super noisy. Um, yes, every time you take a step, it makes a sound like brah, brah, brah. <laughs> doesn't it's, clank. It growls. Did Sturge deodorize those boots? Or? <laughs> oh, Stong does not care. He's like, oh, it smells like my old friend. The boots look way too small to fit on your feet. Like, you can maybe get one over your hand if you really mm-hmm. tried. But um, if you try them on, they're resized to fit your feet. Oh, oh cool. What uh, do I technically add to my sheet now? Boots of uh, kind. Boots of kind. Thank you, Sturge. Welcome. Roga. Oh, hi, Sturge. I have worn this necklace since one of the very earliest days of our incorporation as the Irregulars, when Whoa. I believe we went on a outing to fiddle around in a tomb, and we met some other adventurers trying to do the same thing, and they attacked us, and I think oh. it was this. Hi, I'm about this that finally. Is best suited for you because you are, in the end, one of our most important players in the game of night mask squashing because you <laughs> keep the rest of us alive. Oh. And so, this is a necklace of adaptation. It will keep you safe er, from poisonous gases, um, smoke inhalation, such things as that. It's been very handy for me, but. Again, best if I put it to my friends so they can be stronger and I can keep them longer. Rogar feels a little weird about it because, you know, he's pretty resistant to poison and he'd like to see Sturge be safe before himself. So he's, mm. he's like, are you sure are you, sure you don't, don't need it? Like, uh, well, I, 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 I don't, I appreciate the gift, but... Ah, you could give it to Artemisia in that okay. case. Okay. Okay. Yes, I don't have anything else to give, and that would be great. <laughs> uh, oh, here, here. I'll, I'll, I'll say thank you, and then you say you have a second amulet for her. I'll just slip it to you. Okay, I'm gonna. I'll do it like a, a subterfuge, or what do you call it, a sleight of hand to uh-huh. take it back and say. And as luck would have it, I have two of these. Or to me, <laughs> uh, this is for you. Will keep you safe from smoke inhalation, poisonous gases, such things. Thank Maybe you. keep you alive long enough to save our asses one day. Okay, that feels good. Off to Ruan the- leans over to Rogar. Does he think he's gonna die? Is that why he's giving things away? <laughs> that is the thought that is in Cecilia's head. It's like search to us. Oh. We need to check. He has div- He does have divination. I wonder. He wants Sorry, to says, say, well, Rogar could bring him back to life, though, so it couldn't it? It wouldn't be that big a deal, right? I want to make <laughs> eye contact with Rogar and try to convey through a very significant look that mm-hmm. he should check on Sturch because I'm a little worried about him. But okay. I've already committed to going to a uh, I'll, I'll, intimidatingly I'll, at Rigante Bless. I'm, I'll, I'm going to stay behind and check but on Sturch for sure. I think okay. you, you're the right you're the right dwarf for that job. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. 
<laughs> All right. Someone in the chat say, I don't have to, uh, uh, Herc work. I don't have to unru un outrun the dragon. I just have to give my party cursed items so they stay there. <laughs> and I, escape. I don't That's think amazing. Sturge would do that. Old Sturge, I would be very suspicious of. Oh but God. we've, you know, grown and, you know, we've reached something like a friendship. Yeah. And you know, if you did that, I would come back from like. the grave and haunt you. <laughs> I would make a new character specifically to hunt Sturge. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Just remember, him. friend Sturge, Sarshan says, Rogar's magic can bring us back from the dead. <laughs> Factor that into your plans. <laughs> Very well. I see you're all bent on mocking me, but that's all right. I'll We're worried all... about you mostly. Mm. I'm changing and growing. Be happy. I feel like this is the third, third time, like third episode, that someone said, "Rogar, you can bring people back from the dead, right?" Like, as you start, Rogar's starting to feel like, is that all I am now? Like the person who can bring people back from the dead. Well, <laughs> like, I mean, that's a highly in demand ability, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, run along, okay. people. Off to it, but come back here by 11 o'clock this evening and come back rested, please. Uh, Sturge. Hi. Well, uh, so, oh, wait, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming everyone like those and does it. So. Is this a good shift? I think uh, the sisters, are you going to go see Rigante? All right. So they take off. You take Sarshan with you. He Endless. does promise to try really hard not to set anything on fire. I have a wand of paralysis now, so if he does, oh, there we go. I will save all of us by stopping him. The wand of paralysis, <laughs> aka the sergeant off switch. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it sounds mean, but it's kind of like at this point, it's an unknown level of problem how often sergeant seems to set things on fire when no one's looking. Sergeant, <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. So the sisters and Sarshan take off. Um, All right. On the Ru Ruin, will, or, uh, Ruin. <laughs> Ruin Rogar. looks over at Rogar and, <laughs> like, they exchange a nod, like, he knows that Rogar is going to go talk to Sturge. So he uh, goes to help Charity with the dishes. Okay. So, uh, Sturge, uh, if I could talk to you real quick. Of course. Uh, well, first, I just want to say, like, I've been meaning to tell you, like, I, 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 I was talking to Ruin and, you know, we were like going back and forth talking about all the various ways we kind of ended up together. And it was became quite clear, I think, that you had quite a bit of a hand in that. I, you sly devil. You, I, I think like when you apparently like you slipped a, a, one of my a piece of my shield into his pocket so he'd come into my bedroom and, uh, you know, and you've given me some very like insightful advice in the past and uh you know i i, I had not real really thought about it because you hide it so well but i see you know, i see that warm squishy heart inside there sturge they kind of hide it from me uh so um uh, but uh speaking of sort of frank if i saw so are you okay is that warm squishy heart okay uh not sure I know what you mean, but uh, well, certainly... You're giving I'm... away all your magic items. What brought on that change? You know, Rogar, I may be immortal, but I Are worry you? about my friends. And I have been faced with immortality of my friends many times recently and so i'm quite happy to jettison these things which i thought were so important when really it turns out oh my god i'm going to say it my friends are more important ah oh. don't tell anyone i said that <laughs> Make me sick to think of it i didn't say it. you said it <laughs> oh sturge you cannot take it back I heard you say it, <laughs> but I won't embarrass you and tell the others that you said it. But I know you said it. Uh, uh, well, so you're what you said you're immortal, as in you cannot die. Oh, I can die. But um, do you mean mortal? You're mortal or immortal? 
Is this why we're here? I think you, <laughs> you ask, wish to stay. This is a side issue. I'm happy to speak of it some other time, but... Um, um, well, I was a bit troubled. I mean, I, of course, really support this whole, you know, I support you and this whole idea of, you know, fighting the night masks, but I have to be honest, I've been feeling a little weird lately. Uh, I had this experience in the shop yesterday when I, uh, this morning, whatever this is, when I was shopping for gifts for for everyone uh, that really, like, reminded me, uh, brought the Bogglewomps back, sort of front and center, and sort of was like a wake-up call that, you know, I had, the whole reason I came here was, and fled my temple was because I had that vision from Sharintlar that, uh, you know, that there was this Bogglewomp threat to my people and to all life on Toril. And Gorn Gulthin said, you know, defend the Western Gate. And after a little bit of trying a couple of other gates, uh, I, I thought, you know, that must be Westgate. And <clears throat> but and I kind of just fell into things here, including all of this conflict with the night masks. But I'm beginning to worry, like, is this really what I'm meant to be? Like, is this the best way to help my people? Right? Because uh, is this what I, I, I have not seen Bogglewomps from anyone except for myself on the doors of the outpost but as all this research i'm looking at your wall is there anything in there that indicates like the night masks are working with the boggle wumps or controlling the boggle wumps or have ever heard the word boggle womp <laughs> hmm. i'm so glad you've asked me that i have I've thought oh. quite a bit about this. Okay. Let me ask you something. Are you so attached to the word Bogawomp that you think that that is indeed the, are you attached to that word? Do you know a better word? Is there, is that like, is there a different word like in, in what, uh, I hum, ask, human or I, I, immortal no, no. human I ask, or whatever? I ask you this because the gods, though I am not a god-following man, I believe in them, and I know I... of how the weave was nearly destroyed, and how Mistra was killed, and how some of the forces of evil have, in fact, almost destroyed this world in the past. I... Well, not Shar. She was, yeah, uh, that's exactly. devastated my people. Exactly. Not fan of Shar. I... Exactly. I... Sharnlar. Sharindlar cannot, because of the way Shar meat-fistedly nearly ruined the world with her interferences, Sharindlar and any god with sense cannot directly interfere. She sent you a dream, but your mind translated it into things that you could understand. You gave them that name, she did not. Mm. She gave you the message that this world is under threat, it's precisely by Shar. And yes, I'm going to tell you right now, through the night masks. Listen Ooh. to my reasoning. Do you remember the first vampire we ever met? I believe on that day, you had a very close call with death. Uh, I, the, the very you... first, when, when I came to Westgate, when I first arrived yes. in Westgate? Yes. I... What, what was it? Where was it? Uh, it was outside that. Was it outside the purple, mm. purple lady? Stong was we, playing. And... It was after that one. We were in oh. the sewers under Briar. Oh, oh, okay. Do you remember that? And that, and that's when we met the first jelly thing. Um, uh, Roomba. Cute. Roomba. <laughs> cute. Oh, yeah. the the guy. Oh, right. It was like in this crypt with all the blue fire and the runes and the. Yes. Aye, aye, aye. And why did we survive that vampire? Why did he not kill us? Because we were very weak at the time, we were new. Why did he not? Uh, I, I cannot remember. Was it because uh, was it because Cecilia pretended to be a priestess of Shar? He mistook her as a priestess of Shar. The oh. vampires are in league with Shar. If they're not I... her puppets, they're her allies. Even that first one we met, the guy we can't even remember his name, a throwaway vampire, was <laughs> in league with Shar. Well, the and Duchess then, of Darkness certainly was. She was a priestess of Shar, was she not? Yes, Perfect and she an active, magical statue of Shar. It's Shar. Sharindlar cannot send you 
direct interfering messages that says, go fight the influence of Shar in Westgate, because that's the kind of crap that Shar does that almost tore the whole world apart. And so when the divine reaches into us, I realize I sound like a preacher at the moment, but really I'm talking about magic, and that's the thing I am most passionate about. Yes, when you, reach... You've rarely seen Sturge so zealous and passionate <laughs> as he is right now. When yeah, really Rogar's getting better. swept up in it for sure. Oh, hi. When the touch of a god enters mm -hmm. the mortal mind and the matter that is our brains, I can't process it. We translate it into a way that our minds can handle. And that's what you got. You the, the most important thing is Westgate, evil that threatens the world. Now we're not talking about the fire knives. It's the Night King and his unholy marriage with Shar. And that, my friend, is your purpose. That is why you're here. That's why we need you. Okay. Uh... Shar Rindlar <laughs> needs you. Okay. I, I feel so Rogar feels like there's some truth there like it's just starting to make sense to him and not everything is lining up for him like why did the boggle wumps only appear to him and there weren't and, I, and he started to think I don't think anytime the boggle wumps appeared there were any vampires around or oh. night masks around but like when he thinks about like why Sharimlar would send him to, to Westgate or Gorm Gothin would send him to Westgate Shar definitely has done very bad things to the Dwarven people. And uh, and he starts to make these connections as well. Like, So Shar is all about loss and despair. And the Dwarves are definitely suffering a lot of loss and despair right now. Uh, so yeah, he's starting to like, you know, I think it, it he feels like he's just going to trust you. And kind of, he came to you for this advice. He's going to trust that advice and trust that, you know, maybe Sharindlar worked through you to give me that message and is going to go with it. It's okay, you know, I'm, let's, let's investigate this. Maybe if I can find one of these ball bags, if we go into this lair and I can find like a priestess of Shar or something, I can ask them about it as well. Like, this is a good, I ha at least it's a path forward. And uh, so Rogar is on board. Aye, Rogar is convinced. That's very good, good thinking. It's a very, very a lot to think about, Sturge. Thank you. I, Hi. I, my pleasure. I, I myself struggle with the influence of the divine in my life and how my mortal matter, the part of me that's stuck in the mortal world, must translate these things into something that I can understand. And then I have to think outside of it. Well, which of this, what of this is just a reflection of my weakness as the message comes to me and which mm. is the pure message itself. So did you get some kind of message that led you to give away those gifts? Ah, I thought you got away from it, but no. No, no. <laughs> uh, you know, the time is ticking and I have got some shopping to do. Rogar, I oh. am so glad you came to me because you are, of all of us, you have the strongest call in this. Oh. None of oh. us but you had a vision. None of us but you were touched by a god specifically for this purpose. Now, I must run to go buy a bunch of sharp paraphernalia to scatter around this place you know, and I will see you <laughs> later. <laughs> Hi. Uh, and Rogar's thinking it would be good to get a nice a bit of rest and knowing Ruan, it's going to be hard to get rest. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> aye. So Rogar's going to go and, and try and get some rest before the raid. Okay. The Sturge really is going to go out and buy some sharp, like, knickknacks. But his mind is racing <laughs> over all the possibilities. Knickknacks. <laughs> 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 Just roll down to the sure. corner store. Get <laughs> yeah. some sharp paraphernalia. <laughs> bottle of milk. Chips. I, mean, I need someone to pin Sturge down on this. I'm an immortal thing. It's like when you go to like the dollar store and they have all the like the Catholic votary candles with all the saints on them and stuff. Yeah. Like just like you know, there's a Shar one. Yeah, there's a Shar the one. There's a yeah. <laughs> all Black right. Cecilia and Artemisia, you are making your way toward mm -hmm. the Rosebud, which is one of the uh, 
one of the taverns that uh, was rebuilt fairly well in the uh, wake of the devastation to Westgate, mostly because it's owned by fairly wealthy um, operators and it uh, has a wealthy clientele. Although you can see that the building is still scarred and damaged from the, uh, from the fallout. Um, most folk are eating out on the terraces overlooking the Sea of Fallen Stars or the river. It's actually very well positioned with excellent views. Although uh, recent um, development of other buildings in the uh, in the docks area has blocked off part of the uh, waterfront view. And the uh, owners of the Rosebud were apparently unable to stop it. So that's the kind of place that you're going to. The folk there appear to be uh, well-dressed if some of the clothes are a bit threadbare and they look a bit tired out from the uh, difficulties that they've been facing, but they're still here drinking, talking business, etc. How did right. you dress to come to this event? That's the first question. The second <laughs> question is, do you have a discussion on the way there or are you gonna save your discussion for afterward? Probably on the way there, yeah? I don't know, how nervous is Artemisia? Yeah. Like if you're wound up well, so you don't wanna talk, it's okay. <laughs> I won't make you talk or I'll talk um, nonsense and try to distract you. <laughs> <laughs> Closed first. Close um, is a good what I was thinking is um, if they get there and there's a, a moment where they're sort of um, trying to scope it out and see who's visible um, without like going right in, you know, if they can see onto people who are out, um, uh, then that's a good time to like just talk a little bit before maybe the actual time of the meeting. Okay. Um, so Artemisia is absolutely <laughs> beautifully dressed. Um, she's got her new green grass coat on. It's got the beautiful embroidery and really expensive and just dressed to the nines. So, did you make me change? I mean, so I gather about Cecilia's style is that it has many different elements. Um, she probably didn't make her change, but she may have requested that one or two or three of the elements were subtracted from the outfit <laughs> together previously. The LA story. Turn away and look. The first thing you notice. Get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a slightly less uh, loaded up rag bag. Got it. She's probably got the. Uh... Here's, here's the question: Does she need to wear her green grass jacket? Would, you, would Artemisia be like, you know, you'd look so nice in that jacket. Okay. She did wear the jacket to Briar House, right? It did, yeah. yeah. So, uh, did either yeah. of you remind Sarsha to wear a shirt? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> she oh, yes. Try on shoes. Right, she of course. For a shirt. He looks at the shoes. She's like, mm. which probably means you're not allowed in the restaurant, Sarsha. <laughs> Oh, I don't know though. Maybe in Westgate they're like eh, shoes. But I have to I have to be in the restaurant to protect you. I I know. Cecilia, mm -hmm. could you cast your seeming spell on me to make me seem to be wearing shoes? <laughs> I think that's a very good compromise. <laughs> All right. <laughs> very close. No slot. I mean I only have, I have, I get them back after a short rest. If I can't abuse that ability, why am I even not a warlock? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. I will cast seeming. So Sergeant looks like he has shoes on. Nice. You need to build him a little artifact he can wear. That makes him always look like he has shoes. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I don't that. That is a philosophical issue that would be hilarious to dive into, but would be incredibly <laughs> digressive, so we will not do it. <laughs> However, I still do kind of wonder if it's worth having some sort of, like, coverage. So in case she's bringing people that we can see, and I don't know the layout of this, if there's somewhere that it would make sense to have Starshin stand so that he can see what's going on. Or maybe we don't need that. Maybe we should just do a quick perimeter check, and that's good enough. 
yeah. That that seems easiest. Do do the check around. Should I perhaps sweep the perimeter? I tend to be fairly good at finding uh, sentries, Sarshan yes, says. But That's I true. need you to remember not to burn anything down. <laughs> Why do you keep reminding me of that? It's like I was talking about it earlier. Yeah, you keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you and us because we are inside this building. And if you burn it down, we will burn up. And he reaches out good. and touches Cecilia's cheek and he says, do not fear, I shall not burn anything down. Okay. And then he runs off. God, I hope he doesn't burn anything down. He doesn't turn into a wolf because that would spoil your seeming spell. That is also good because I think it would actually, I don't, I don't know what that would do. It might just actually make him look like a wolf wearing shoes on his back feet, which would be extremely confusing. Okay. <laughs> but funny. All right. Uh, he starts running away and halfway, halfway through, he turns into a wolf and he has boots on his back feet. <laughs> All right. Established seeming persists after shape change. <laughs> Leaving the I'm two sisters <laughs> alone. <laughs> okay. How are we going to play this? We ready? Yeah. So is Satsuli going to bring it up or should Artemisia? Hmm. I mean, well, I think it's Artemisia because if you're talking about Cyril, I don't think Satsuli wants to talk about Cyril. Okay. Um, so, uh, Cecilia, um, since we're a little bit earlier, um, you know, at the, the feast for Greengrass, um, I was saying that, you know, we should um, talk about not just the finances, but um, you said, you know, it's fine about Cyril, um, that he's my familiar and not yours, and he should really be your familiar. Um, and, and I don't think it's fine, because I would say it's fine, and it's not fine for me. So um, I just wondered... Do you want to talk about that? Because it seems like the kind of fine that maybe you should talk about. Um, Cecilia is clearly like kind of flustered because, like I said, she doesn't want to talk about this, but she probably should. Um, she's like, "No, it is fine. You don't. I mean, if you don't want Cyril to be your familiar, you, I'm sure there's a way to get rid of that." And it, Cyril doesn't want to be my familiar anyway. He doesn't? I thought he did. Well, he said that, and to be clear, if nobody caught this before, Cyril is a cat. <laughs> um, is the cat that left Cecilia the bird skeleton last episode. Uh, he said, like, that he, that he tried to make the familiar bond with me, um, but that it didn't work, and and I said, well, I don't understand why it didn't work and why you had to do it right then. And he said, well, it went off and I didn't do it before because I thought you'd say go away. And then and then he said it actually like, he said it bounced off me because I am emotionally unavailable. And we had a big fight and I'm not talking to him. And he keeps meowing at me, which is basically not talking to me in cat. So anyway, Cyril clearly doesn't want to be my familiar and he's, just being weird about it. So. This feels well, like some serious it's fine. Thoughts. What? Sorry. <laughs> Nothing. I was gonna say, this feels like some serious Ross and Rachel, how I met your mother, like <laughs> constant, just missing each other bull crap right here. But anyway. Um, Don't trivialize it. It gets to the heart of a serious <laughs> conflict going on no, with the characters. No, I totally. Some I of apologize. us have earned our no. intimacy issues, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. Sorry. But anyway. Yeah. So, um, if you don't want to, it, I don't. I I want you to have him, and it sounds like he wanted to be your familiar. He called me emotionally unavailable. That seems unfair. Well, I mean, sometimes, you know, how you grew up with your family is is different than other how other people grew up with their family like i'm realizing agree? that look at uh look at uh, me and sarshan that's i'm being very emotionally available here with yeah yeah i have huh? yeah 
that's good. It counts. Yeah. I'm making that face. <laughs> she, that face is like, oh god, this is Rogar's job. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and maybe it it you're really emotionally available with Sarshan, and maybe you can be really emotionally available with Cyril too. I just need to like release him I guess and then and then you guys can work it out I think that Cecilia in just in trying to defend herself has uh smell as Nala would say smelt her own bull shark mm. <laughs> uh, and so she's gonna go yeah just you know I'll help you finish I'll help you get rid of it if you need well good I'm I'm I hope it will work out. I'm, and 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 I'm sure that um, she'll be a really good familiar for you. I mean, I. What kind of familiar do you want? She's gonna just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. Well done. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, how emotionally I, available. <laughs> I what what kind of familiar would want me? Because I mean, okay. I'm not very interesting. So, whoa, 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 no, like that's not fair. You're delightful. Okay, you have extremely good fashion sense. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. You care <laughs> about all of us, even though we are all a lot of mess. And not related to familiars, but you do get up to some interesting action with some interesting people, so that's a thing, too. Well, and yeah, that's, well, it's like at school. All the other girls said I was really nice, and the boys, well, you know, I gave them what they wanted. And so, like, nice and available, like, that works for kind of friends and lovers, but familiars, like, I mean, why would Cyril want to be my familiar? I mean, clearly that he didn't. So, but I mean, you you're... You want Cyril to be your familiar. Cyril is... He does not fit you. That's, and I think that's, that's important. Yeah. I, 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 it just, it was um, kind of hard to, you know, he was like, oh, well, I'm only with you because, you know, you're second choice. Which is another reason Cyril is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not, it's not nice having people tell you you're not enough. I know that one. And it's not nice having people act like you're missing something really important because you're not fitting whatever mold they want. There's a familiar out there for you. There's a person out there for you that is a lot better than Lilton. I just want to be clear. Oh. <laughs> I also don't think he appreciates you enough. Because. Also, he's a dirtbag. But... Well, yes, but he's rich. <laughs> they can be rich if they try I think how does money work anyway whatever <laughs> okay well she's she's gonna hug Cecilia I was gonna go a little stiff but she'll kind of hug her back because she is too emotionally available. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll tell Cyril that you know, you know he he needs to be a really good familiar for you because you, you deserve know, it. Also, if we're gonna be mad at people, I think I think all of this, all of this, we can be mad at mom. Yeah, 
because having someone throw you away sucks. Yeah, she kept I mean, Ruin. She didn't keep either of us. Yeah, let's also be mad at Ruin, maybe. <laughs> Poor Ruin. <laughs> <laughs> and not just because of all of that really confusing stuff about abolishing money. No. But also, maybe just a little. Cut to Ruin and, and Charity doing dishes <laughs> together, and he's going through his anarcho-communist theories with her. Wouldn't it be so much better if we could all just live closer to nature without any need for coin? And she's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, Charity, we need things like beds and roofs. <laughs> Ruin doesn't want roofs. <laughs> okay, so 1 to 10, Artemisia, 11 to 20, Sincerely, here we go. What? Okay, Sincerely. Huh. As you two are hugging it out, you see a beautiful green winged butterfly just flapping past. Is this the kind of butterfly I've seen before? Mm, yes. Hmm? Here? Yes. Well, it's pretty and clearly it is striking. the windows. Yeah, it is striking because it's it's catching the, the setting sunlight. You close the windows? No, I was saying the restaurant should oh. close the windows. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bugs are getting in. That's right. <laughs> Insects. And Man. unlike Ruan, I don't want to live a lot closer to nature. But probably closer to nature than Artemisia wants to live. Because <laughs> I don't really care about shoes. <laughs> Maybe I'll point to it and be like, Artemisia, look at that butterfly. Oh, oh, I saw one like that the other day. Um, it would make a good um, color for, for a dress, I think. Don't you think? Huh. Yes. It would look great on the end of a pin, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> no. Blast it. Blast it. <laughs> I, already, random I already did the cut the cut to ruin, but if there were a cut to ruin right now, it would be him going like ah, and like holding six butterflies on his fingers. <laughs> as much as I love the idea of Cecilia being like, watch this. Uh, I don't I don't believe she would choose to do that. If only just no because fun. people just would eldritch it blast so the boring. butterfly. <laughs> All right. We got a fire knife coming in. All right, so you're at the rosebud. Yeah, we should, um, we should go inside properly. And then... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were sitting at a table. Oh, okay, I'm sure. Picturing this all wrong. Well, you're you're at the table outside the rosebud, yeah. and so uh, come back. <laughs> eventually, Dude, come back. eventually, you uh, you see a. Uh, well, you see a red wolf in the in the shadows, and if it weren't enough, he's a big red wolf. He has little shoes on his back feet. Which red wolf could that be? Across the street, and he he catches Cecilia's eye, and he goes mm, like a nod, <laughs> like uh, puss in boots, sort of. He looks like. I love you, I Eric. How you always just pull those little <laughs> things through. That's just you're so good at that. Anyway. Props. You uh, do you send him a signal, Cecilia? What would I be signaling? Like he can he can join us? Because I definitely yeah. Felt do like you I want him giving... to join you? Do you want him to continue guarding the? I was under the impression he was gonna go check, <clears throat> make sure there were no like you know fire knives hiding in the alley. Make an inside check. Us. Okay. I did that roll? Uh, fourteen. It looks like. Uh, with your 14, you can tell that what he meant by the nod was uh, everything is good, secure. Okay, then yeah, she'll kind of gesture like, come back. Okay. So he uh, he oh, starts padding toward you just and turns into himself and almost gets run over by a cart. Oh, geez. Hey, Dodges whoa. out of the way. And he says, you see him arguing with the uh, with the person driving the cart. <laughs> okay, I may have to go kill a cart driver. Uh oh. And then the cart goes on its way, and and Sasha goes, ah. Okay. Question. And he heads did over. His, did his shirt come with him? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay, so we're. It would have been funny if you'd done the seeming to give him a shirt as well. So it'd be this wolf with a shirt and boots. <laughs> Like like full well, Disney. 
for in here. <laughs> All right. Okay. So yeah, he, he shows up and he says, aha, here we are. He sees that there are only two stools at your table and he's like, surely we, surely we have enough. Okay, now we do. Okay, she's <laughs> late. Or are we early? I didn't no sooner No sooner has Sarshan sat down than uh, one of the servers, a uh, an aging man, um, very slender, uh, obviously kind of gaunt almost, like he hasn't eaten very well recently, comes over to you and he says, ah, would you be Lady Artemisia to our own? That is correct. He kind of looked among the three of you and then settled on Artemisia. <laughs> Why would that be? <laughs> He says, uh, well, you, uh, you are expected uh, if you would accompany me. No, oh, all right. We all stand up. Yep. Yep. Sarsha's like, oh, but I just, I just, all right, here we go. <laughs> and then he leads you into the restaurant. So once you get uh, through the doors into the actual restaurant, the place is deserted. Uh -oh. Like everyone is sitting outside and all the all the tables and booths in here empty except seems realistic. for except for a booth um toward the back uh with windows overlooking the sea of fallen stars and you can see the the sunset illumining the horizon over the uh edge of the water and you see a woman sitting there and it is clearly a regante bless um she's sitting there she's not wearing armor at the moment, she's just dressed like um, a noble woman, or maybe like, um, and cut kind of plainly, not like it's a grand affair. She's not wearing a dress, tunic breeches. Her red hair uh, is long and loose and covers half her face, mm -hmm. the, the half that is not turned toward you. And she looks over at you and uh, you can see her one eye looking out at you. She's, ah, yes, of course. She rises kind of stiffly. Welcome, join me. I see you've brought everyone. What a well, reunion a this is. A few of my friends. Can I do a quick sweep of the room with detect magic? Sure. Um, you doppelgangers anyway? You don't get the sense that there are any active spells that are going on right now. Okay. Um, Regante has a couple of magic items about herself. Um, yeah, she's so wearing we... a ring, she's wearing an, an amulet. Those are both magical. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna sit down, should we sit down? I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm gonna whisper this to me. Please <laughs> join me. Etiquette question. She gestures to that bench. To Artemisia will sit down and sits then, down herself. Um, Artemisia will will gesture to Cecilia, but um, Sarshan, if she can catch his attention, she'll she'll say that he can sort of stand up and ready. Okay, sort of it's guard. a four person. Stand up and ready, but okay, fine. I'll it's essentially it. a four person booth, but she's sitting on like the outside of one of the benches, and there's like something like a like a pack next to her on the other side. Um, so she's blocking off that entire side. So you two can sit on the other side of the table from her. And then there's no real space for Sarshan to sit down unless you get really cozy. So he stands there like this. <laughs> yes, exactly. And Regante kind of like looks over at him and then she looks back at you. And she smiles kind of like, <sighs> so we meet again. Mm. Thank you for accepting my invitation. It's good of you to see me on such short notice. I was very curious what you might have to say. I apologize for not <clears throat> signing the letter. I have to maintain a certain degree of anonymity. The city is not particularly welcoming to uh, vestiges of its former leadership. Mm, true. So thank you for maintaining my discretion. You could have come here in force and you would have been justified. We did not part on the best of terms. Hey, you kidnapped us. Mm, 
I kidnapped her stepmother. It's true. You falsely I... imprisoned <laughs> the rest of us. Is that better? Indeed. But this time I have no hostages, no coercion, no threat of force. I simply wish a truce. On what terms? Mutual benefit. Westgate has changed. You have played a significant part in that. I have some degree of power and control over the infrastructure of the city, and I have been keeping a certain degree of order in the streets, but I can see that the old ways are not going to be reestablished. Mm, that's correct. And I am something of a futurist. She reaches up as though she's going to brush her, her face like that's a regular um, mannerism, and then closes her fist to Canada and lowers it, not doing that. Uh oh and She says, <laughs> what I would like is to establish an alliance with you. It's similar to what I asked before. You are popular. You are the heroes of Westgate. But I am under the impression that you also have expenses and needs. I can assist you with that. Celia is going to reach down and grab Artemisia's leg. Like, don't do anything <laughs> stupid. <laughs> yeah, Artemisia's going to do anything kind of, like, rash, jump a little. <laughs> let's say. If you and I were to forge an alliance openly or in secret, whatever you prefer, my resources would benefit you. Your popularity could benefit me, and mostly importantly, we would not interfere with each other's efforts. Also, since I know those are not sufficient terms, I would apprise you of my efforts and activities, and I would expect some degree of the same. Ah, hmm. uh, hmm. question. Sorry, can I ask question? Go ahead. <laughs> are you making this deal with Artemisia or are you trying to make this deal with the Westgate Irregulars does Artemisia speak for the Westgate Irregulars I do not then I am making this deal with the Westgate we're, Irregulars we're an and I am glad collective. I am glad that <laughs> Artemisia has brought you Lady Cecilia <laughs> but I'm not gonna say that out loud. She said um, it in sort gonna, of a like I'm being in, respectful in, in sort eyes, of way. In eyes with Artemisia, like either she's making fun of me or okay. So you can roll an insight check if you would like. About what? Whether she's about fun whether of me? she's mocking you or being mm -hmm. sincere. I feel like Cecilia would just go straight for the mocking. I figured you might think <laughs> that. Um. So Artemisia, uh, she's gonna kind of like start to not a little bit, but then like sort of stop herself and sort of go a little bit blank, blank face. Think, but... but we need to know what terms we are bringing back to the rest of our what do we call ourselves? Compatriots. Party? An, an order? I don't remember what was on the contract. Um, <laughs> a company? Our company. Your chartered company. Yes. Yes. Our autonomous collective. My, That's right. <laughs> my greatest question um, would be um, what activities would uh, come under the purview of this information sharing because I believe um, I can predict among my friends and the others in the company that that will be a stumbling block um, and also um, there are alliances to accomplish goals and there are alliances to face off against other forces and I want to be sure that this is not the latter it is the former that you are offering. I don't want to ally against anyone in Westgate. I only mm. want greater peace throughout the city, and we are not going to. Oops. Good call. <laughs> I so see. Is definitely thinking we have enough enemies right now. <laughs> How very shrewd of you, Lady Sarah. Indeed. Um, I do not wish to ally with you against another faction. There might be rival factions that emerge and seek to challenge us for 
the power that we consolidate in the city. But I am not presently aware of all any but the one that Just... poses a serious threat. It was your guess as to the one. <laughs> you and I have a common enemy in the form of the night masks. Ah. Chaos, shall we say, nature abhors vacuum. When power falls, it must be filled by something. And when chaos grips a city, it produces opportunity for dark forces. I am already aware of the night masks seeking to consolidate power over the city, and I have done my best to oppose their efforts. If we were to forge this alliance, I would share my information with you. And if you have any night mask pertinent information, I would wish you to share it with me. If we work out an agreement whereby you act overtly or covertly against the night mask, I would be interested in supporting such arrangements. That is, that is likely, um, I, I can make no promises on my own, even me and Cecilia, Cecilia and I um, cannot speak for everyone. However, that is likely to uh, be favorable to the others. What is, what is, what is sort of the end game of this? What is like the ultimate goal of this alliance, I guess? Do Our... not, do not take too long thinking about it. There is a storm coming to Westgate, and it is in the form of what none of us expected. You see, the so-called happy earthquake was merely a foreshock, and the larger threat comes from the mob. Perhaps you have not been walking the streets recently and heard the shouts and cries and the dueling rhetoric about the future of the city. Without the merchant council to rule them, the mob is unruly and seeking additional power. Mm. If they cannot be brought into line, and I'm not sure I could do it, even with your help, we must find some other outlet for that power. You Just gonna turn me into have, have a certain amount of charisma and sway among the people as the heroes of Westgate, as it were. You could position yourselves to take a great deal of control when it becomes pertinent. Question. How much night mask information do you have on your person right now? <laughs> you seek to take it from me by some means i all i am asking is if you were prepared for us for a trade if we were to make this decision would we get anything out of it today i am prepared to i am prepared to offer you a gesture of goodwill yes like so that we can take it because i actually i will tell you the truth regante i'm not going to call her lady blood i'm going to call her regante Yep. I will tell you the truth. It will be a lot easier to convince our friends that this is any kind of a good idea if we can sh bring them a show of good faith. In particular, Sturge. She reaches into a, a shoulder pocket and pulls out a uh, scroll. Okay. Which she puts on the table between you. What's that? Schematics of a certain building in the dock ward known as the mm. Broken Buckle. Oh. I believe your friend has developed some interest in this location. Mm. My agents have uncovered a certain amount of information. These schematics show rooms that might not be apparent on first delving. That's some pretty good information. Well... Uh, she she presses her her fingers down on the on the scroll and she says this is a gesture of goodwill. Mm -hmm. You do not have to accept this alliance with me in order to take this. I want you to understand that. Yep, this is the, this is sweetens the pot. This helps us. 
I need you to understand. Indeed, I need you to understand that though our interests have not always aligned and likely do not align now, I do wish order in Westgate and peace in the city. That is what we wish as well. You have my word that I will recommend to the others that we pursue this alliance. Um, however, uh, they will probably have questions of their own or ways that they wish to um, uh, phrase the limitations that we will place upon uh, information, etc. cetera. Um, so perhaps uh, tomorrow we could have a meeting all together. Just send our terms to Castle Bluff. Of course. Of Assuming your nighttime activities go well, she removes her hand from the scroll. You're not actually that worried about that because otherwise you wouldn't give us this. We'll see you tomorrow, Regante. <laughs> How it's very a, true. Stole from the scroll. <laughs> this time when she reaches up and brushes her hair back, she just does it without stopping herself. And you see that half her face is like hideously mangled by burns and like she's missing one of her eyes. Ooh, is that ooh, from Sorsian, Sorsian. And she Sorsian says, do not- Castle Bluff, or is that from Stong? <laughs> burning down the Merchant's Council. <laughs> do not think too one. long. Okay. It is very easy to be scarred by reckless hate. And then she goes back to looking out the window. Ouch. Yeah, Artemisia, like, she she's gonna flinch. Like, she's trying, but she's very appearance-focused. And, like, the idea of being that scarred, like, sort of shakes her to the core. <laughs> oh, Lady Saron. <coughs> Before you go. Yes? She pulls out up this sack that she's been keeping on the bench next to her. And she plops that down on the table. And she says, a small gift. <laughs> I feel like this is going to be horrible. I'm so excited. Let's okay, it's just, it's like this wet plop onto the table. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I was hoping it was money. Oh. <laughs> Artemisia was I have too. a guess and I want to write it on a card and see if I'm right. But okay. <laughs> so she she's going to like. I doubt that you will appreciate the full significance. Carefully open, like the the bag to kind of like look in a little bit. Okay. A little fly zzz, buzzes out mm. and there's a stench of a, of a rot that comes out of the bag. Whose head's in the bag? Well, it is a pitch covered half orc's head. <laughs> what? Do you recognize this? Do you recognize this person? And she I says, think- be wary of assassins. You are a person of importance in Westgate now, whether you wish it or not. I should hate to see harm befall you or your sister. Session says, or me. (laughs) Regante does not say anything. (laughs) So we don't don't recognize who the assassin is? Mm, Make an investigation check. Okay. Can I do it too, or is she the only one? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Oh, well, uh, Cecilia, you'd have... I don't, I don't think you've ever met this person, though, that's so... What I was thinking. I rolled a 13, but... Yeah. Uh, Daza did give you inspiration at some point. Thank you, Daza. I I just... I don't think it's possible think for Cecilia to uh, well, recognize this person. you know what? If I had rolled it, I would have made up a reason I knew, knew this okay. was, but it's okay. Ar- um, Artemisia. 15 is 15. what Artemisia got. Uh, you think that is the head of Dolores, who was uh, Regante's bodyguard when you went to the uh, last meeting of the Merchant Council, shall we say. The one that Stong turned and had murdered yes. everybody. <laughs> yes. Oh, Dolores. <laughs> and you're not, you're not entirely sure what that signifies. I mean, maybe he turned against Regante. Yeah. Yeah, what, why Why should she in particular feel threatened? But she's gonna... I feel like, like anytime someone shows you a head in a bag, there's an implied threat. <laughs> Don't betray like, me. Even if it's just your friend is someone who puts heads in bags. <laughs> Regante says, I um, 
if you would like, uh, you might show this to your companions. I don't want to touch that. Do you want to touch that? Sarshan. Sarshan says, I'll take it. I don't he just want picks him it up. to touch it either. He, he puts it, he <laughs> says, I'll put it back in the bag. He puts it back in the room. Oh my God. Not... Slings it over his shoulder. <laughs> Ew. Like, oh, what? It's just, it's just a disembodied head. It's not that big a deal. Okay, are we leaving? <laughs> Yeah, you're yes. you're leaving. Okay, as soon as we're out, the last the last thing you see is Rigante looking out over the water. You throw the bag in the sea. Yeah. Don't I feel like we could just tell Stong that yeah, that's that true. Rigante cut a guy's head off without making Stong look at that. It plops into the water. Enjoy the snack, Quelzarn. <laughs> <laughs> Did Stong like, know that guy? I guess is I that truly a thing, the Quelzarn? I should like to meet this Quelzarn no. one day. No. Hmm. It's not friendly. You've met the Quelzarn? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wait, did I? Cecilia. Is that canon? There? That was I a can't pre, remember. That was a, that was a, a, a pre-screen it's, episode, but I don't remember. It's legends. Cecilia first thing on <laughs> okay. Z, so. Legends yeah. of the Westgate Irregulars. <laughs> ah, got it. So the head, um, he was Regante Bless, uh, bodyguard at the Merchant Council meeting before I guess that was when Stong was wrong at that oh. point, and I I left early. Sarshan looks off like... the bridge. Oh, some bodyguard. I don't feel like we should bring this up with Stong. He's still very. I don't want to say he's sensitive about all that stuff that happened with the book, but I mean, he's beating himself up a lot about it. That that's that's true. I should hate to see friend Stong come to hurt. Sarshan says. If he brings up this guy, maybe we'll just tell him Rigante off him. Or maybe we just leave it. Maybe they didn't know each other that well. Well, but what if R- Rigante brings up, brings him up when, when we meet? Are we going to actually go talk to this woman? I think she's extremely dangerous. I'm glad we got the map, but... Well, um, you were saying we shouldn't use Lilton's resources, so here's another way to get resources. We're going to go ransack the night masks. I feel like that's going to give us some resources. I mean, I'd rather not, because she's talking like my stepmother again with the whole, like, just because there's a power vacuum, you should step in, blah, blah, blah. Ew, um, don't listen to her when she sounds like Marcelia. Don't listen to anybody when they sound like Marcelia. She's awful. <laughs> I can only understand a third of what Marcelia says, but it's enough to know that she's awful. <laughs> she says. See? So, I, but but I think that it if we can get the terms right, then it would be better to have this alliance than to not have it. Well, okay. I will be fair here. We, as I said, are an autonomous collective, so everybody should get a vote in this, and I'll argue with everybody. <laughs> we'll just keep, I mean, I'm sure Sturridge it. will have an opinion, but this is I mean, the information that she's offering us about the night masks. Well, let's find out if it's good, because if we go in there and all these rooms are fake and actually mimics or something, <laughs> then we'll know what we're dealing with. <laughs> you unroll the scroll and it's like mimic arrow, mimic arrow. <laughs> no, 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 it's a pretty useful room, and then we walk in and you know it's a mimic. Chomp. All right. <laughs> so I think on that note, we will take our break and then we will come back with the first delve into the night mask hideout. Um during the break, do folks want to uh want to have a, a, a chat topic? Um, I saw somebody asking who <laughs> was the, the first one to, to get mimic? poisoned. Oh yeah, who's uh, that was a pretty good poisoned? one. Um, I mean, not with heroes feast on. Well, so sh- okay. I was wondering Should... if people wanted yeah. to know more about like archaeology stuff. So yeah, that's a good if, question. If, if Chad is interested, do some start talking about it, and then I can come back early if we want. And yeah, what mm. what archaeology. things about uh, Farron's past? the past of the Forgotten Realms, would you like to study if you were an archaeologist or an adventurer looking for archaeological information? After we wreck up the dig at Mithranor, where should we go wreck up other digs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I've heard of something no, called gonna... Netheral Scrolls or something. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that, oh, That's buddy. like a strange thing. Oh my god, that seems like such a strange thing. All right, thing. Yang Yang, close up for 10 minutes. Just... 
Okay. Yeah. Don't uh, go away, everybody. We'll be real back. Real quick, though. We are only 2K away from completing the community challenge. That is like <laughs> right. one person just needs to donate their gold lions, and then we will hit it. Thank you to everybody who donated already. All right. That's see you amazing. after the break. Kalen, well, Matt, welcome to the second, third... Okay, the last third of tonight's game, uh, which is going to start the actual delve into the uh, Night Mask safe house. So uh, Yang Yang should be showing us uh, Roll20 on the stream right now. You can see the irregulars gathered outside the uh, safe house. I didn't put Sarshan on the map. Do you want to bring Sarshan with you? Or is he going to look for sentries and stuff? That is useful. It is useful. I mean, I leave it to other people. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, Cause... he jumps in front of things for me, so I'm a little biased. <laughs> <laughs> and I care about him and stuff. He's definitely useful. So he doesn't like. There. Can we all get together? We're all kind of spread out. Yeah, gotta get close together so a fireball can take out everyone. <laughs> I meant to get more water in. For some reason, I didn't. Anyway, it's fine. Hmm. All right. So, um, is this it on the left? Water bottle to the dog's collar. Send it out to the shed. <laughs> I actually have a bottle of water. It's just like outside my reach. All right. A splintered sign depicting a silver belt buckle swings limply from a single hook over the doors to this dilapidated structure. Here are the front doors where I'm pinging right now. Mm -hmm. From the outside, the inn resembles any of a hundred buildings in Fall and Westgate, a stout two-story building of cracked, shifting brick and wood. It may once have done a bit of business, but the recent cataclysms have hollowed it out. Were it not for the occasional light seen through the boarded up windows, no one would know the building saw any activity at all. Sturge lets you know that this is the place. Um, and based on his research um does the back door not seem like the least um visible from you don't know what's around back you know that there is a back um you know basically what's in the front room the common room uh this area right here where i'm pinging i don't mm -hmm. know it doesn't i don't know if it shows up on the stream yeah. um but you've seen the common room and you see that there's a hallway up here to the upper left inside there, and uh, it opens up into a kitchen over in this direction, just straight to the left. But that's all you've seen with your with your scrying. Okay. Um, I would have also- Knock on the front door. <laughs> I'll cast the windows. All look like, mid, like night masks. That's a good use of that, a spell slot, right? The windows are all boarded up, like I said, and the doors don't seem to be just unlocked and open for anyone to come in, so. Right, and do I have information that there were wagons pulling up somewhere in the front or back? You have information that folk were hauling around, <coughs> hauling away things from the, uh, from the inn, but you don't see any activity there right now. Okay. And yes, they were coming from around back. Okay. Well, um, I'm happy to do a little scouting back there. I think I would make myself... I have my Cloak of Elven Kind. Okay. So um, before I... you leave, I think Stong would cast True Seeing on you. <laughs> I'm going to say that he uh, hung out with Mirabelle for the day, so he essentially took a long rest. They napped together and spent a bunch of time. Mm, okay. Great. Thank you. And Rogar also uh, tells Sturge that when he feels, when and if he feels appropriate, he can cast freedom of movement upon you, so that you can, if if we get to a point where you're concerned about like having to move around difficult obstacles, or that someone may try to like you know cast a hold spell on you or something like that. Then... Ooh, nice, <clears throat> very good. Okay, so bright magic shines from Sturge's eyes for a moment, and then. Uh... If you cast the freedom of movement, you know, spells swirl around him. I'll wait for uh, him to tell me what he Okay. It's a good time. Because yeah, it lasts an hour, so. Okay, I'll wait, I'll wait. Um, All right. I'm gonna... You're going to head up into that 15 foot alley up there? Yeah. The rest of us do. You have all the maps and stuff, man. 
Oh. <laughs> um, Do you consult the map that Regante showed you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you are headed off to the alley. I'm asking the sisters. Oh. Okay. I guess so. I'm like, Sturge, okay. this is your mitch. Fine. Okay. <laughs> Apparently we're on our own. Okay. The no, map. No. no. We, the we, map shows that there are uh, guest rooms in both the <laughs> northeast wing, which is over over here, and then the uh, northwest wing, which is over here. And there is a basement, um, and north of the root cellar, there is some kind of shrine to Shar. That's what it says. It's like listed on the schematics. Um, it says Shrine Shar. Rogar's like, oh. It's yep. going to be really embarrassing when you find out that's an abbreviation for Sharindlar. <laughs> no. Rogar just, everybody strides in, just murders everybody. <laughs> and then Rogar, the twist. Rogar gets in last because he has the <laughs> shortest legs. And he's like, what, what have you done? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Anyway. Perfectly sized legs, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, what is this over here? This uh, across the street? Uh, that's the basement. So the blue line oh, indicates okay. uh, a divide in reality. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, um, the ghost gravity. Oh, the ghost gravity. So we think we're waiting for Sturge to come back. Yeah, um, so I guess we would, uh, everyone would just wait while he while he takes a peek all right so you're just kind of going to peek around the the back of the uh of the place okay yeah. so uh you can see that there's this kind of forested well not really forested just kind of grassy area that um hmm. that was probably once part of the operation of the inn uh, what was once a flourishing garden with a fountain and gilded seating now lies in ruins. Overgrown, the stones crack, the fountain full of muddy, stagnant rainwater. You see an abandoned wheelbarrow leaning against a nearby wall. That's right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to motion everybody to come. You don't see any enemies, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely look in the roofs and, the, and so on. Uh, in fact, I've got my spider climb. Booties on, slippers on. You can uh, make me a perception check, please. Yes. The windows here are boarded up as well. Spider storage, spider storage. <laughs> I feel like this place probably wasn't in the best shape for the catastrophe. So <laughs> I'm not going to go. I see you made a performance check. Oops. I just did a little dance. That's why. <laughs> cheek, 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 cheek. We're all like, it's not your best. <laughs> Just like did a 14. quick jiggle jiggle bounce, and uh, now he is on to the scouting. Okay. So, um, you don't see any obvious um, activity from the nearby building. However, with your 15, you do see that there are doors here mm -hmm. that lead into another branch of the, of the inn. You also clear out this dark area. You see a number of dogs over here. Dogs? Yeah, they're like um, kind of mangy street dogs Ooh. that are uh, <clears throat> just lying on the on the ground. That's not good. Dogs. One of them is chewing on a bone. All right, I'm going to come back here. And just they don't that. appear to have noticed you. Right. Okay. Um, mangy street dogs. Oh, I got this. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think Cecilia can turn into uh, her wolf form, her koi wolf form. Okay. Um, and uh, then go over and use beast speech to talk to the dogs. Mm. Nice. And uh, hopefully uh, she can be intimidating as a as a coyote. Or she or she can not intimidate them, but just be like, "Hey, free garbage buffet, two streets down." <laughs> That's also fair. I'll read the room. <laughs> All right. So okay, I, I have, I have now. Yeah, I put you on oh, the GM I'm... layer and turned you into <laughs> a wolf. Love it. So that's now, Cecilia. All right, come Saved. over here. Yep, you can now move your wolf okay. around. So if I move over by those dogs, do they react? 
Are they hostile? Or are they like, what's up? You're not attempting to be stealthy in any way? No, why would I? Uh, yeah, they they do notice you and they, they perk up and they stand up and they, uh, they all turn toward you and um, start growling kind of warningly. That's not necessary. <laughs> I'm just passing through. What's going on? This, this is our territory. Well, that's fine. This is our bone. Yeah, I don't want your bone. It's one of them, one of them grabs the bone. Arr, I arr, saw. Arr, arr. A, okay, I already <laughs> mentioned I'm gonna take your advice. Like, I saw way better bones over by the black boot. That's like a, like a butcher dumped a bunch of junk and and also all the bones. Mm-hmm. Okay. At least make, there were three cows. Make a deception or persuasion check. Either way. I'm so good at both of these. Hopefully one will save me. Ooh. Haha, 26! <laughs> huh. Oh, more food. Let me look around. Like, what's what's a black boot? Hmm, it's that tavern. That One of the dogs of... says, Oh, somebody kicked me with a black boot once. Oh, shit. They're like, Oh, I don't like black boots. It's, uh, a, it's, a, it's a place that the humans go. It's down where the fish stink is really strong. Um, oh, fish stink, really strong. And it smells. What is something the black boots I like squirrels, like? one of them says. Good for you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, there's like, ah, huh? yeah, squirrels. Do, is squirrels. there something that I know about the black boot that would be identifying to a dog? Mm. You have been there in wolf form, mm-hmm. so you think you can you can describe the smell very specifically. Okay. Like you would never, it would never have even occurred to you to think of it in these terms as a half elf, mm-hmm. but as a wolf, you're like, yeah, it smells exactly like this. I and want like, one, of, oh. one of the smells in this to be the proprietor whose name is Gnarl Shatterspike, I recall. <laughs> um, his his cologne, which as a half elf, I don't like. Right. And as a wolf, I really don't like. Yeah, <laughs> it's very pungent. It's like getting punched in the face. Oh, the, the smell of punch in the face. Yes, <laughs> with the beehive one. But a bunch of, bunch of bones, and that's pretty far from here, right? Like not crazy far, not like, ah, I don't want to bother, but it's not, a ways. not like across the street. Cause I would yeah. like them to go away for a while. All right. Um, with your massive 26, uh, <laughs> they scamper. I love when Cecilia gets to talk people into and out of things. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Nice. Happy. Thank you, uh, wild sister. <laughs> don't mention it. And then the third one, comes by and wait, goes, wait. I like squirrels. Wait, 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 one quick question. Do you, huh? uh, do the, do the, the things in the humans that aren't quite humans and stuff that live here, uh, feed you? Only humans live here. Oh, that's interesting. Do they feed you or do you just? Sometimes, good bones, okay. long bones. Mm. <laughs> People bones? Mm. Taste vaguely like people. Like mm. man flesh, like man flesh. Ah. Ah. Mm. And then they're like, hmm, have to go find food. Da, da, da. Okay. Ah! They see everybody and they they just scatter off um, through the back alleys. Good call. Ooh. All right. Can I change back? Yep. Okay. Like, okay, they're dealt with. I'll bring your, uh, oh. I'll bring your oh. token back. Which might be good because they seem to be getting fed people. Although they did say they didn't think anyone here wasn't a human, but I would not bet completely that they can tell the difference between a human and a vampire. So keep your guard up. But. All right. So the rest of you, you saw these three dogs just scamper <laughs> off, and then Cecilia came out of the shadows, turned back into herself, told you what she learned. All okay. Right. I'm thinking I'm going to try the back door. Uh, Cecilia, when you were over here, you also saw that there was another back door. It's down here at the southeast end. Hmm. There's another back door. Mm -hmm. Is this like a big warehouse to the south? What is that? Uh, It's just another building. I didn't really (laughs) specify what it was. It might as well be a warehouse or a tall house. It's not important. It smells like it's just full of old wood and broken carts. Why can't I smell what a broken cart is? (laughs) Anyway, there's nobody in there. All right. All right. Let's. Uh, is everybody together here? Artemisia. Oh, Artemisia's just... still standing in the street. <laughs> Where'd you. I just didn't move my thing when okay. you guys moved. Yeah, I'll put, I'll put you there. 
Okay. okay. Um, so, well, let's just get around back. We'll put Artemisia out front, you know, just in case she needs to use lightning. <laughs> Don't put her behind me. Thank you. Hey. I'm hey. going to need everyone to make a stealth check. This is a group stealth check. So, oh. Stone and I have advantage. Actually, oh, I, I have, that. I'm normal because I had disadvantage. Oh. And then you gave me advantage. Because okay. clank, clank, clank. I'm going to use my uh, inspiration on uh, that one. Okay. Rogue got, got an 11, so he's being like, I'm being very quiet. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's much better. Okay. Ooh, I got a that's, 10. That's, that's a 19. Okay. So oh, hold on. 11, 10, <laughs> 19, 13, 26. Okay. Let's just. I, I should have been. I should have gone frontal assault. Been like, dick, 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 dock scout cookie. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so okay. Yep. Yeah, you uh, you head into the uh, the alley. You don't like nothing overt happens. Okay. I'm gonna um, examine with my true sight this door. That's a window. That's a window. It is boarded up. You can't really see much through it. With your oh, true door. sight, you realize it's a window. <laughs> <laughs> the door is not boarded up, though, right? Uh, that door uh, is not boarded up, no. Okay. So he's going to investigate the door and see if he can figure out if it's locked, if it's trapped, all those things. Okay. Um, that door does appear to be locked. Uh, make an investigation check. Okay. Then uh, uh, Rogar says, Sturge, hey Sturge, with his 11 stuff. Right before you open the door, let me know I'll cast Detect Evil. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, yeah. That, the door is uh, blocked off by something heavy on the inside, you think? Okay. Maybe it's barred from inside. Okay. And do I think I can get some tools in there and move the bar? Hmm. You can attempt to. Okay. Um, make a dexterity thieves tools check. Here it comes. Walking down this street. <laughs> Okay, so you think you can get the lock open, but the door itself just does not budge. There's something um, heavy on the other side? Okay. So yeah. Stong can... Stong's going to step up, and he's going to try the door. Okay. Um, so True Sight, or True Seeing, does not take concentration, so I think he could probably cast Enhance Ability on himself and double his um, carrying capacity and give himself advantage on strength checks. He, he's going to offer to power through the door if we don't have another solution. It's it's unlocked, but I can't, there's something heavy on the other side. We yeah. Can try, we can try a different door and maybe have... Uh, because pushing will make noise. Um, unless there's some way to dampen the noise, if anyone has a way to dampen it. Uh, I can cast... Si Song can cast Silence. And oh, that... that but then somebody else would have to... Um, well, I guess he could cast silence and just not have uh, uh, advantage on his strength check. But that's fine. He casts silence. Okay. 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 And I'll, I'm going to step back so I can hear over here by that window. It is a 20 foot radius sphere. He's going to center it directly on the door. So you would have to get like at least five squares away, I think, from the door. Okay, I just want to be able to hear if people are coming or something. Well, you wouldn't be able to, standing right there. Here's two 20 foot radius. Yeah, that is just outside the radius. While they're figuring stuff out, since I was going to lead over to Artemisia with the map, and be like, where do you think the good stuff is? Well, <laughs> right now you're in the aura of silence, so. I have yeah, she does that and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Asia doesn't answer. She's like, 
<laughs> Rogar's looking up at the window too and being like, wasn't there another door? <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Give it your best. All right. Um, <clears throat> Stong is going to walk up to the door. He's going to like stretch out his shoulders, stretch out his hands, and he's just going to try to just charge into it and push it um, as fiercely as he can. That is going to be a 28 on my strength check. Oh, damn. damn. Okay. You bounce off the doors and oh, land on your God. butt. It's like you slammed into a solid brick wall. He he shrugs and he says, mm. <laughs> "There's a you set up this vibration wall. that goes like it shakes the wall of the house silently because it's silenced." Huh. All right then. Perhaps we should try a window. Um, or there's another door, Sturge. Oh, okay. Follow me. <laughs> Or, or, I'm just or, saying. The door I told you about. Okay. Although I guess, you know, Artemisia could teleport, tele telekinesis me up through the window. I didn't want to have to, like, waste her spell slot <clears> for that. <throat> I was just imagining myself trying to crawl up through that window, and it wouldn't have looked <laughs> good, first of all. It would have been kind of embarrassing, but also, chances are, me in mithril plate climbing through a window, not quiet. Okay, investigate this one. Oh, man. Hmm. <laughs> Can't seem to get a look at this one. Um, he rolled a one, a natural <laughs> one. What was for that for? For more stealth? Him? Are we rolling stealth? For investigation. No. Oh, sorry. Um, Can we help him? Or Sturge, are you like, no, everybody stay back? No, I. Uh, are the windows? They're all boarded. You said. Um, what about the upper upper level windows? I want to look at the door. You want to look at the door. Um, all the windows are boarded over, like I said. Even upstairs? Um, the upstairs windows are not boarded over. Oh. I wonder, I'm just going to walk up the wall and take a look at one and see if I can jigger the window. Uh, latch or whatever. I'm going to look at the door for <clears throat> Okay. Oh, you know what, folks? We have a silence spell right over here. At that one window, we can just pull the boards off. Yeah, it's Let's not. Do. It's not the boards that are stopping the door from working. It's something no, no, no. heavy inside. I understand. So, I'm, I'm talking about this window. It's in within the radius of the of the silence spell. Right. See where I'm, where I'm pointing? Yeah, but I'm having so. I'm having some small technical difficulties with roll twenty. So just give me a second. Um, but keep talking amongst yourselves about what you uh what you want to do and stuff. I I <laughs> I'm a fan of this window because it's in silence. We could even break the window once we pull the the boards off. Well, I, I think that we should probably, if we're gonna go through it, through a window, send somebody in to like come around to the other side of the door. Because it doesn't I'm seem looking at like looking at the map, we can figure out like okay, we send one person in the front, one person yeah. in the window, okay. I'm back. one person in this door. Yeah, Rogar, Rogar is going to whisper into the air, Caleb, if you're just hiding again, <laughs> you could shatter the door. <laughs> um, no, nothing. If, okay, if you'll all trust me on this, this is a this is a sure thing. We've got silence. Pull the boards off. We open the window, and we're in. All right. You with me? What happened when I investigated the door? Um, okay. Uh, you're talking about this door at the southeast corner yes, of the building? that one. Okay. That door is clearly locked, mm -hmm. and it has some kind of uh, bar or latch on the inside, but okay. it's easier to maneuver, you think. Like, you might actually be able to get through this one. Can I see, see in? Um, you can see you a little bit through the door jam because the door doesn't fit super well. <clears throat> um, and you can see that it's a, uh, it's just kind of a dusty, dark room inside. Okay, technically if I can see it, I can misty step inside. That is true. Nice. Spent this spent this silence. 
So I'm willing to go along with the with the window tearing option. And if it doesn't work, this is plan B. Well, somebody in uh, chat just gave you a, a spell slot. So you could essentially what? do this for free. Yes, I'll do that. And I'll go help you open the window from the other side. OK. Is that good? Sounds dangerous, but yes. So, Cecilia, you're going to missy step into yes. the uh, that lower Does room. Does my detect magic show any, like, there's a trap there if you land kind of uh, nope. sigils in the dust. You don't yeah. see anything I'll obvious I'll like that. Teleport in behind the door that the, the southeast door that's locked. Okay. Ooh. You teleport in there. Whoop. Leave that slot. And find yourself in a kitchen. Okay. Ooh. Can I turn around and unlock the door <clears throat> that I just popped through? Sure. Let me describe the room though. Okay. Uh, food was prepared here, and the place is full of animal droppings and chewed up bits of fabric and wood. The table against the southern wall is covered with a series of rusty, poorly maintained knives, covered over with a thick layer of dust. The door in the east wall is firmly locked and also barred, so there's a, there's a bar, but you can lift it out um, without too much trouble. You see a trap door in the southeast corner. Uh, and obviously it opens up into that uh, room with the hearth. You don't see any people in this room. There are a series of barrels, bags. Um, it looks like this room has been largely picked clean. Um, although uh, a couple of the barrels have clearly been moved fairly recently. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to make a perception check, you might not notice something else about the room. I definitely do. Okay. Was that 16? Right. You do see that there are footprints in the dust leading from the door uh, deeper into the building and toward the trap door and okay. by this uh, table with the knives. Okay. Yeah, you can open that door or at least you can unbar that door. I'll unbar the door. All right. Can I unlatch it, or is it like locked? Um, it is locked, and you don't have a, a okay. So you lift the bar, um, and it is not terribly what it's. It's not secured to the wall, so you have to like lift it up and then set it down. But you don't have a strength of six, so it's it's okay. Um, if Artemisia <laughs> were trying this, it would be more difficult. Um, but with your relatively ten. regular strength score. Yeah, 10. You I'll can probably you make can a lot anymore. of un unladylike noises doing that. Yep. <laughs> and, um, but you don't That's have the okay, key to unlock the, the lock. Dang it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, somebody else would search this place looking for the key, but um, I told Sturge I would go help him open the window from the inside. So okay. I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell Rogar through the crack, because I see Rogar standing on the other side, be like, I need someone to pick this lock. I can't open it. Okay. I, you know, if I, Sturge wouldn't have gone if, if you were, if he knew you were going to go through. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's no point in, <laughs> if you're going to go in there. Uh, well, you're now in the aura of silence, Sturge, and you cannot hear that this was going on. Well, but she just said that she told. He said that he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have run off if Cecilia was like, I'm just going to miss you step in there. All right, well, I'm not going to let you retcon it. Okay. This oh, is a dungeon okay. crawl. This is what you right. want in yes. Steven. Yeah. Fine. All right. Fine. I'm going to move we'll very go carefully go. here we've, and listen we've right. and, and see if I uh, if I can hear anybody in the next room. Okay. You see that there's a hallway with a couple of doors here, and there's a window uh, that's boarded over. Okay. Uh, you can peek around this wall. You see that there is a uh, continuational hallway with a set of stairs that leads upward. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see that the hallway is uh, about as trafficked as the kitchen, as in okay. there are still uh, footsteps um, in the uh, in the dust. Okay, but I don't see anybody waiting to stab me, for example. You uh, you do not. Okay. Um, this hallway up here is blocked with a barrel and a bunch of rubble, okay. like um, fallen boards and such, suggesting that maybe the entire east wing has collapsed. Mm. Okay, I'm going to move carefully, checking at all crossways okay. uh, towards make, Sturge. Make a stealth check, please. Oh, do I have to? Yep. Oh, I should have given you guidance before you went in for the go. I rolled a two. Whoa. <laughs> you rolled a two. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, you uh, you step on some loose boards and uh, they oh. crackle under your feet, making a loud noise that is that echoes around the dusty, uh, dying building. Uh, okay, you can see a little farther here. Let me get to this real fast. Um, huh. Well, now, why is that not cooperating? Okay. Uh, you can see into this room here now that you've uh, moved past. I'll just describe these rooms here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the common room of the buckle, which is this room here, resembles what you might expect. The furniture is scarred and discolored from neglect and moisture and broken bits of glass and wood cover the floor. The bookshelf in the corner, had, uh, which is this bookshelf here, um, has a few yellowing chat books and a couple of dusty tomes. The hearth appears to be mostly a puddle of rain that has flowed down the chimney. The whole place smells of mildew and rot. This room here is the uh, sitting room. This room opposite the hearth boasts a trio of finely upholstered couch sitting couches arranged around a space in the floor where a table might once have stood but is now a series of broken damaged floorboards where the chandelier fell through and now lies partly stuck in the floor. Hmm. So like the chandelier fell, there. smashed the table and is now stuck in the floor. Uh, you can now see down the hallways. Okay. Uh, you can't see past this rubble into this hallway. That's fair. Um, generally speaking, uh, the narrow hallway five feet on a side um, forms a cross shape through the end, each branch ending in a boarded over window. Okay. The eastern wing is blocked by barrels and rubble, suggesting that whole wing of the inn has collapsed. In the southern wing, a set of rickety ste wood steps leads up to the second floor. Um, there are two small, there are two rooms here. Um, <coughs> you can see doors um, and then there are doors off the hallway. Okay. And do I hear anybody moving around? Make a perception check. I'm a little like, can I turn into a wolf and have a better perception check? But I think I'm just not very perceptible. Nope, you don't it's hear five. anything. I you are very help. aware of your own breathing. Oh! Very loud. I'm regretting this decision, but it's already been made. We're just going to move ahead with it. And also, like, if I do hear something, maybe I should go ahead and do it. It's like, maybe I should cast seeming on myself. So I just look like a night mask, but maybe better if I can cast it away. Because I can't see Sturge through the window because he's all boarded up, or has he pulled off some of the boards? Stong would have done that. <clears throat> has Stong pulled off boards sure. while I've been tiptoeing around? Yeah, he's been uh, doing that the whole time. Okay. Um, in that case, do you walk over to that window, Cecilia? That's where I'm heading, yeah. All right. Um, as you are walking down the hallway, your steps creaking underneath you. Um, at some point, they stop creaking, and you don't hear your breathing anymore because you've entered the zone of song silence. And then you get to the window just as a board comes off, and you find yourself face to face with song. All right. Uh, <laughs> if you are if you are surprised, either of you is surprised and makes a sound. It doesn't matter because you're in the aura of silence. I think this was our this was sort of our plan that I would come around. Since I couldn't get the get the door open, I I'm going to to sign at Stong. Um, don't go. <laughs> okay, Stong, make an inside check. Oh, excellent! <laughs> oh, once she does this, she's going to push on the boards with her little ten string to help. 14. Okay, uh, you're you get the gist of what she's saying. Okay. Which is that you know there's a there's an another door that she has unbarred, um, but Sturge can pick the lock. Uh, Stong will attempt to assign that to Sturge. Sturge, you can make a insight check. <laughs> Playing telephone with Sturge's insight. <laughs> he has pretty oh, good hey. insight actually. Uh, oh, okay, nice. yeah, you you picked up on what he's saying. It's not thieves can't, but it's clear mm -hmm. enough. Like, like I, I just want to point out, if you had thieves can't, I would allow you to speak silently through thieves can't to each other. You yeah, should teach don't. it to us, Sturge. 
Mm, okay. <laughs> That's that like a no. <laughs> He's gonna. He would teach us some some make believe thieves can't. Right, like, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. I will. I will say that um, drow hand sign is very similar to thieves can't in in, in that respect. Hmm. Although thieves can't right. also has a verbal component. Dwarves also very much speak with their hands, so they have a lot of uh, signs as well. Hmm. You know? <laughs> hmm. Oh my god, I'm mm. in a mess of all the people here. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. What's happening? We're all collect- we do we turn in? Whoa. I don't Whatever. know what's happening. Uh, that was me map. trying to mess up. <laughs> Sorry. Sturge is like, come with me if you want to live. Just <laughs> <laughs> went with him. All right. So uh, okay, you all I'll- gather down at that <laughs> door, down at the south end. Okay. Yeah. Try to. Uh, Stalling's going to stop the silent spell. Okay. Um, My breathing. Stong, you stop the silence spell uh, just in time for Cecilia to hear breathing behind her. Oh, <gasps> Cecilia! <laughs> and you realize that this door has opened. Okay, so this is happening. Do I have time to cast? Uh... Well, no, this was happening while you were all walking over to the. Oh. Wait, okay. I don't yeah. know. I, I grabbed I'm the bit die. of the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> I grabbed the darkness. I grabbed the darkness. Um, <laughs> no, there is a there is indeed a, a person there. I'm just trying to find a good uh, mini for this person. One second. Um, and Cecilia, you have a sudden rush, inward rush of air as you realize that someone is right there and they are trying to stab you. Oh my god! Yeah. Ooh, this could answer the prediction poll that came up earlier right now. <laughs> are you going to die? Uh, are you going to no. turn into a vampire? Uh, no. Secret <laughs> vampire or no secret vampire? Okay. <laughs> Alright. So someone's trying to stab me. Do we... Is that happening now? Yes. Okay, so here we go. It's going to show up in roll 20 as a mace, but it's not actually a mace. Uh, he only gets a six to hit you, so I don't, I don't think that hits. Well, he rolls a six? Zoom. No. Thank God. Well, no, he rolled it. He rolled it two. <laughs> Thank God. This time, that my, though, my, my this, has with not his six. with his second attack with his uh, short sword. In fact, he got an eighteen to hit okay, you, though. Okay, that hit. Okay, and it does seven points of piercing damage. No, uh, I don't. So, I rolled a two die ten from the feast. Oh, I don't know if people oh. did or not, but I rolled a uh, uh, thirteen. So you can add additional 13 hit points or you've okay. excellent. Uh, yeah, so basically your max hit points and your current hit points have I'm increased by that amount. A huge dummy. I forgot that I wanted before we started this to put my armor on because I would always put my armor on and I just didn't even say it. So Hey, look, hey, Raiders have showed Raiders. up. Yeah. Hey, Jen, you're just in time to see Cecilia getting stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or not stabbed by the guy rolling it too. All right. Well, uh, he did stab you with the short sword. Okay. Um, did you want to do anything in response? Yes. <laughs> no. Nah. No, I mean, oh, like, did you, you want to do a reaction? Like, uh, your escape? Do I want to escape, or... escape on this? Eh. I don't know. Uh, okay. You, otherwise, it's forgetting. otherwise it's going to be your turn. Can you describe the person who stabbed her? Yes, he is. Um, well, he is a man of kind of maybe thirty-ish years or so, with kind of grizzled features. Um, he is wearing a black mask over his face. Of course, he is. And he's uh, dressed mostly in dark kind of clothes. He is stabbing you from the privy. This is a, this is a mercy oh. closet that he has uh, opened the door from. Is that where the smell was coming from? <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, fear the knife, fear the bacteria. <laughs> so that, <laughs> that room Did he wash does, his hands before he stabbed? That's that just room rude. does smell very bad. It's That's true. why he's wearing his mask, even. <laughs> oh. <inside of> that. 
Otherwise, that's okay. pretty hard for uh, Anyway, um, Cecilia, if you're not going to do... I feel like... Okay. Uh, I have an answer for if she's if she's jumpy, and I have an answer for if she's got her wits about her. Um, roll it. Because roll I was... It. Roll it. There we go. Yeah. Go ahead and roll it. <clears throat> Dice of fate. Make, make maybe a wisdom saving throw if you want to. Hi, if you're startled. Okay. How'd that go? Ah, uh, 15. Okay, so... Uh, you managed to keep your wits about you. Low. Then, then what I want to do is what I was thinking before about uh, what Sturge was saying. I was like, oh, Cecilia has pretended at least three times to be a priestess of Shar. Mm. And mm. so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go ahead. Actually, let's just put the sauce on this. And I'm going to mm -hmm. um, channel my fey presence Ooh, yeah. and go for the frightening. <clears throat> nice. And like this, this sort of um, fills Cecilia with, it's very dark Galadriel, right? Like mm -hmm. the cold void of the cavern beneath the ice. And uh, he has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wisdom save. Here we go. Oh, 17. Wow. Uh, it was a DC 17, so I guess he Ooh. makes it. Yeah, he does. Dang it. He's well, almost taken in, but not quite. Can I, can I uh, yell at him or was that it? You can yell at him. Okay. <laughs> can I yell like, at him? like, what do you think you're doing, you little ant? The dark lady has needs, and what are you doing? Stabbing an imposter. <laughs> do, I make an, do I get to make an intimidation check? <clears throat> or deception? I do. You can make a deception check. <laughs> I am pretty intimidating, but I am more deceptive. <laughs> so I'll take it. 14. Yeah, I think he's on to you. Damn it. Okay. Well, that's probably all I can do on my turn. Okay. As much as I would like to uh, roll it back and blast his face. Yep. Okay. Sturge, did you want to try and open that, uh, that yep. door there? I think I, I could actually roll it a while ago. Uh, did I? I think so. We got to yeah. totally giving you guidance. Well, <laughs> Excuse me. Well, so I, if you if you wanted to add a die four oh, yeah. to it, this is a twenty-five. Oh, Ooh, it's probably nice. don't need to. It's like a trainee lock. These are easy. He does it with one hand just because. You know, <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, it. I'm just, I'm looking up exactly how long it's supposed to take to pick a lock. Oh. <laughs> because I don't think it's just one round. He said it was a training lock. Yeah, I know. My uh, son has a lock pick kit. He's nine. He can definitely do it pretty dang fast. I know he said it was a training lock. <laughs> <laughs> you said when he said he did a thing, it, it was permanent. He couldn't take it back, so... I feel like if we would have heard like uh, <clears throat> Cecilia like shouting at somebody and like, what are you doing? Yeah, or whatever. I, I, I feel like we'd be implied, you know, it, we'd, we'd be inclined to kick the door in and go help her or whatever. But well, hey, Is if Sarshan, you want to kick we, the door did in, we find you feel Sarshan? free. I just want to get through the door with the. the, the... Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So Sturge is, is picking open the log. All right. Um, Sarshan is not present at the moment. He's out, you know, uh, sweeping for centuries and keeping watch. That thing about the beef bones? You went to go check it out? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like, he was he was bounding over and he's like, oh, I gotta tell Cecilia something. And then his dogs came by and they're like, hey, bones over here. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he just follows them. Oh, <laughs> hubris. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm getting anyway. stabbed. Okay. Right. So the uh, that that guy in the uh, in the mercy closet is gonna stab at you again. 
I... Not a very merciful closet. Got a seven and a 17. So I think he got you with the second attack. He does six points of stabby stabby damage. All right. Well, is there something he, he grins at you. He's missing some of his teeth. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. Um, then... For the glory of Char. Ah. Right. <laughs> I tried. I'm going to blast him. Uh, is there something we could roll to see if we hear what's going on? Or is it just our passive perception in this case? Um, it's just your passive perception, really. Oh, wait. So, wait. and they're not making a whole lot of noise. Like she I don't did, know. It just she... blasted him in the face. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have Warcaster right, so that's why you don't Thank have you. disadvantage when you're attacking in melee with a ranged thing. Right. I'm not gonna scream about that because I think it's annoying. But that actually, let me see. I don't. You might have a point. I think Warcaster does that, <sighs> but you don't have. No, a... it says I have advantage on Constitution saving throws to keep my concentration. Oh. I can perform the somatic components while I'm holding the weapons or shields, and I can use a spell as an opportunity attack, which does suggest that I can cast a spell in melee. Because if I can well, do it as are, an opportunity attack, there are spells that are melee attacks. <laughs> it doesn't say I have to do one of those, and you let me do banishment once. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's I legal. This it is. All right, so fine. Much. You can do it. It's fine. It's because fine. Because I maintain that if you put your hand on someone's face and cast Eldritch Blast, that's going to hurt just as much. Yeah. It's not like this guy is that difficult to hit anyway. So yeah, it, well, it's fine. Well, I don't have spells. It's fine. I don't have him. melee spells, and you're not gonna let me say, "Oh, I did have my axe ready." So I it's will fine. blast him in the face. It's fine. I just, I just saw Erin like succeed on her real life intimidation <laughs> roll right there. <laughs> that wasn't intimidation. That was persuasion, Your persuasion. Honor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> your honor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let the court record uh, straight show. up this guy's ac is 11 so it's not <laughs> like she could miss him unless she rolled a one which would be hilarious but <laughs> unlikely. so well, then i would meet it right because my well one it. always misses right <laughs> okay. Fine. okay but i hit him with the first one and yes. uh that's 12 points of damage okay and nice. if that doesn't knock him down i'm gonna do the uh, other it does two. not knock him down Okay, that hits okay, that also. Okay, that one hits, and that's... Oh my god, stop doing the side screen. But I get 15 damage, nice. Okay, uh, you then... buffet him back up against the wall. He is still moving around. Then I'm going to hit him with the third one. <clears throat> mm. Okay. Oh, go through. Give me a second. He could have just believed me. I'm just yep. saying. He, okay, hit? you splatter him against the wall there. Okay, just out of curiosity, are they hiding anything valuable in the mercy closet? Are you saying <laughs> that you would like to search the mercy closet? I want to look quickly and see if there's like, I'm just like, you know, if they had, a, if they've lost, if they've had a whole collapse of a wing, they might have stored some chests in here while repairs got made. Well, you don't see any chests in the Mercy Closet. You do see the two uh, seats where people would sit to do their business. Uh, but actually, you please... do see a bit of chests in the Mercy Closet because he got splattered all over it, right? There so are there's some chest and some arms, well, some leg. Ew. There are curtains that can be drawn, like little privacy curtains in front of each one. Um, do you open up the lids of both of those? Uh, privies to check them out uh, i don't want to but now <laughs> one of them's actually open it, i feel like oh if i oh god i'm so torn because you've suggested it so like the narrative person in me is like well you wouldn't mention it unless it was important except you would mention would it I? if you wanted to troll me and make my character look at poop <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally seeing the train spotting you know toilet right? Right oh okay i'm just gonna just peek down there could okay. we please you enter know? at this point and be like, Cecilia, what the, what? <laughs> yes. Um, the rest of the party has arrived. You came through the uh, the open door and um, <clears throat> largely in time to see blood burst oh. out of that chamber. 
like it just poof, flies up in the hallway and you're like oh yeah Cecilia is doing work and um <laughs> and then, and then Cecilia is checking out the checking out the privies and yeah you Cecilia. don't find anything valuable what look people hide stuff they don't want people to find in gross places look cash flow she's what do you back, want she's like, you wanted money do you like we like kill everybody before we do the looking was... for the <laughs> i didn't go, it's okay to stick my hands in there the last thing cecilia hid was she and sergeant hid that half of an evil book under like a dug down into wolf pee soil so this oh, this the could chat. be a thing people do oh the chat just suggested that both of the mercy closet privy stools are mimics um <laughs> that would be terrible terrible chat what are you doing uh, <laughs> but fortunately uh that is all the time we have for tonight <laughs> so you've made it you've made it into the hideout uh -huh. you've taken out the first night mask <laughs> Uh, and and all together <laughs> once again. Again, he could have just listened. Uh, Tune in for part two of the <laughs> assault on Nightmask Haven uh, oh, next man. week. Uh, probably we'll get it done in one session. We'll see. You know what? Uh, we'll fill the session with fun. Exactly. Right. And so if then there's extra fun for another session, everybody wins. No uh, toilet will go unsearched. That's right. <laughs> the, the chat, the we, we chat is money. lamenting. The chat is lamenting the lack of the secret vampire, and I'm just gonna point out. Tune in next week. <laughs> All right. Uh, Thanks, I have been Chad. Scott to be the DM of this campaign. I never showed you what my shirt looked like. So, like, there's a there's a knight and a lady, but the lady is really a puppet that this monster is oh holding up. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's this whole campaign in a <laughs> well-designed image. Indeed. Ah. <laughs> Take it away, Aaron. I'm Aaron M. Evans. Uh, you can find me on Mondays and Champions of Lore. And then at four o'clock, I will be playing Havilar, my character from the Brimstone Angel Saga in Idle Champions Presents. Um, also tomorrow at, uh, I'm suddenly forgetting the time, at one o'clock. Uh, I will be on Idle Insights with Dylan Wilkes talking about uh, Pirate Havilar and Idle Champions Presents. And I for am I forgetting something? I think that's it. I feel like there's something else I'm supposed to I feel like B Dave's about. got oh, you check trained. Check out our sponsors Idle Champions <laughs> of the Forgotten Realms <laughs> at idlechampions.com. There we go. And oh, don't forget to get your chest code. I've been Rian and Hill, and uh, thank you tonight to our moderators, Shay and Seldring. Uh, hi, I'm Yingying Wang. Once again, this week's charity that we are highlighting is Feeding America. Um, this charity was uh, very special to Nathan Crowder, our guest DM, a couple of weeks ago, and for very good reason. Um, despite America being one of the richest countries in the world, we have millions of families, and especially children, living in our country who face hunger and food insecurity every day. Especially because right now we are living under a pandemic more than 42 million people may be experiencing food insecurity. So please check them out at the link below, uh, learn about their mission, and please consider getting involved or supporting if you have the means. Thank you. I'm Steven Merlino. You can also find our past videos on our YouTube channel linked on our Twitch page below. Be sure to click subscribe to support us and the bell to get notified as we add new content. Uh, I'm Rennie Henderson, and the adventure continues over on our Discord. Hop on over, come chat with us about the game, about books, about uh, uh, hobbies, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. And then uh, you can check out our website for more information on our players, our characters, uh, the campaign, uh, past past episodes, uh, tons of fun fun stuff over there. So, and uh, and there are it's fiction. So I think uh, Cecilia or oh yeah, there it is. I have a a new uh, entry of Young Cecilia tomorrow or when. When Eric yeah. approves it and says you didn't break anything. <laughs> All right. So that's I really strength. need to do that, don't I? Okay. Yeah, we're shifting that to Thursdays to accommodate uh, her, the, the new schedules of things. So, uh, yeah. And uh, so lots of, uh, but lots of great fiction that can kind of catch you up on Cecilia's backstory and other fun things over on the Discord as it's well. A lot so of check crappy, that out. Like, I, oh, 
See, I'm trying not to swear. It's a lot of bratty Brashemi apprentices nonsense right now. It's great. <laughs> I these children. Mm -hmm. Um, I awesome. just want to point out before we're done, chat did buy bling bling for Cecilia, I think oh, specifically you. so that she would find something <laughs> of value in the mercy closet. That's right. Oh, you said it, it has to be in the story now. Oh my God, so I have amazing. made that in the notes. <laughs> oh my God. Keep that in Excellent. mind for next week. <laughs> you know, Stan should have never doubted you. Should have never doubted you. You have a nose for money. <laughs> <laughs> That was for something. Yes. All right. Yes, right? <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. Well, until next week, everyone, stay scrolling. <laughs>